Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. Tender, slow-roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. The bold flavor of Japan, now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere. Blog Talk Radio. This is True Capitalist Radio. True Capitalist Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of business. Give him capitalism or give him death. That's it. Period. Broadcasting from his Skyline Office Studios in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. You sound fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops, for Christ's sake. And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the prognosticator of prognosticators... The man they call Ghost. <laughs> What's going on, man? I hope that you're making money. I hope that you have entertained a lot of the things that we've talked about on this broadcast. God damn, did anybody see the markets today? Oh, Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, uh, thank you for tuning in with me. Of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. It is episode number 168. 168 episodes of the True Capitalist Radio have passed, for Christ's sake. I mean, we're almost near the 200 mark. All right? I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> But before we get into anything else, I'd like for everybody to please retweet the broadcast. Go to the social networks, go to the forums, go to the blogs, and spread it around like wildfire. And let everybody know that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, folks. I almost, I almost did not do a damn broadcast today. Almost. But I figured that, uh, you know, since I took a week off, uh, you know, a couple of days back... I might as well go ahead and attempt to do a broadcast, because let me tell you something. What did I tell you? Huh? What did I tell you? The prognosticator of prognosticators strikes again. I mean, I hope at least three or four weeks ago, I think it was about four or five weeks ago, actually, uh, it was a Monday when I dedicated the whole broadcast to the Occupy Wall Street protests, is when we had one of the biggest retractions in the market, uh, that brought the Dow Jones Industrials at about twelve, or excuse me, at about ten thousand seven, I believe, what the Dow Jones was at that particular time. And I remember very vividly telling everybody that it is your time to start bottom feeding on some of these opportunities that are out there. I mean, Warren Buffett, you know, even though he's a little long in the tooth and kind of talking off his keister at, in his old age here, he made billions with a B, billions of dollars exclusively. On the damn stock market, all right, exclusively. And how did he do this? Well, when everybody was leaving the market, when everybody was leaving, it was time for him to start entertaining opportunities out here. That's how he made lots of capital. When everybody's leaving, it's time for you to start entertaining some goddamn bottom-feeding opportunities, for Christ's sake. I mean, don't you understand that? And that's exactly what I did, folks. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. That's exactly what I did, folks. I don't know about you folks, but I'm making money. I'm having a great day. I mean, did you see the markets, for Christ's sake? Did you see the markets? Let's go ahead and get right into the markets, for Christ's sake, because it's a great day. I almost didn't do a show. I still may just end this show early. I'm telling you right now, if you goddamn trolls, if you milky liquors, if you pieces of garbage that prank call me, if you give me any kind of crap today, I'm out of here. Do you understand that? I'm out of here. Let me tell you something right now. I don't need to be here, all right? I mean, I've made so much money today, I can go out and buy two new cars right now if I wanted to. Do you understand that? I made so much goddamn money today, I could buy myself a goddamn fourth home if I wanted to, for Christ's sake. Do you understand? So I don't need to be here conducting this broadcast. The only reason that I'm doing so is in hopes 
of sparking synapses in the brains of those throughout the international community to become capitalist. Do you understand that? you got to become capitalist, baby. Learn how to generate revenue. All right. If you're working a full-time job, don't piss away your money at the end of the week when you get your check. Go out there and invest in a variety of different financial instruments. Make your money work for you, baby. I mean, that's what this whole broadcast is about. I want as many capitalists as I possibly can inspire on this show to become millionaires. Do you understand that? I know I have a lot of young people who listen to me on this broadcast, but I want them to become millionaires, baby. All right? And what do I want in return? I don't want absolutely nothing. All I want is some props, baby. All right? <laughs> <laughs> when they're interviewing you on the Wall Street Journal or on CNBC or Fox Business, I just want you to give me some props, baby, and say, hey, I would have never have been a capitalist. I would have never have understood how to forecast the market. I would have never understood how to be a damn true capitalist if it hadn't been for ghosts from True Capitalist Radio, baby. <laughs> Woo, man, I'm feeling great, baby. I'm, this is just great. This is just great. Great day, all right? I mean, we might as well call it a baller Thursday because I made so much money today, folks. I don't know about you, but I made so much goddamn money today, it should be illegal. Uh, but um, thank God it's not. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, get to the market, shall we? Now, did anybody see the Dow Jones Industrials? Huh? Does anybody see what uh, the Dow Jones Industrials is at at this point? It is up today, 339.51 points. Let me repeat that one more again. Let me repeat that one more again. 339.51 points on the plus side for the Dow Jones Industrials. That's an increase of 2.86% on the day. You understand that? I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Closing out the Dow Jones Industrials at 12,208.50 points. I mean, let me repeat that one more again. 12,208.50 points. What have I always said throughout the whole year? I said that as we get close to the end of this year, 2011, we are going to see the Dow Jones Industrials at 13,500. And I know that I've had a lot of tweets and a lot of emails from folks that are kind of skeptical about that particular prognostication. There's a lot of people that have tweeted me up saying, Ghost, are, are you still standing by that prognostication for 13500 at the end of the year? I said, hell yes. All right? Hell yes. And let me tell you, these gains here should show you that you need to start listening to the prognosticator or prognosticators. When everybody was out here calling, oh, it's a double-dip recession. Oh, I don't know if the American economy is going to grow. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, man. Well, look at it now, baby. <laughs> I mean, go back into the archive. I mean, I belong on Fox Business or on CNBC or the goddamn Wall Street Journal. I'm glad that every one of these shows are timed, dated, and stamped. Because let me tell you something right now. I have prognosticated all the things that have transpired, not only in this market, but in the political, socio, and economic processes of this country. And yet, do I get any kind of respect? No. I get no respect from anybody out here. But you know what? I really don't care about respect. I really don't care about people you know, asking me to be interviewed on these stupid business channels. I don't give a crap. You know what I care about, baby? The money. <laughs> it's all about the money. And let me tell you something. I'm making lots of it. And I hope that you folks that have listened to my broadcast... Instead of just, you know, chafing your penis by, you know, waxing your carrot like a goddamn stupid, uh, you know, 13-year-old boy that just got his first damn Playboy magazine, hopefully you are actually listening to the content that I'm relaying on this broadcast, and hopefully you entertain some goddamn bottom-feeding opportunities, and you're making as much money as I am, baby. And you want to know why I continue to make money, baby? Because I got to have it. <laughs> Woo! Man, I'm feeling good, baby. Once again, Dow Jones Industrials, 12,208.50 points on the closeout. Let's get to the S&P 500. S&P 500 is up, up, up and away. It has increased 42.59 points. Let me repeat that again. 42.59 points, a percentage increase of 3.43% on the day. I mean, good God. 
3.43% on the day for the S&P 500, closing out the S&P at 1,284.59 points for the S&P 500. Let's go to the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ also increased today. It is up 87.96 points, a percentage increase of 3.32% on the day. I mean, good God. <laughs> I mean, let me tell you something. Everything in my portfolio just rose today, baby. I mean, what a day. What a day. <laughs> anyway, we got uh, the Dow Jones, or excuse me, the NASDAQ uh, closing out, uh, or closing up on the it, upside, 3.32%. Closing out at 2,738.63 points for the NASDAQ composite. And let me tell you, our brethren across the pond out there in England, they're also capitalizing. The FTSE 100 is up 160.58 points, a percentage increase of 2.89%. Closing out the FTSE 100 at 5,713.82 points. Good God. I mean, man, I, I just... Where's my drink? Get my drink real quick. I mean, cheers to all the capitalists that are out there making money, baby. Oh, my God. Well, all those damn bums on Occupy Wall Street are sitting there camped out voluntarily in tent cities, you know, acting like vagabonds and, and disgusting waste of human life, basically demanding somebody give them money, demanding a handout. I hope that the capitalists are out there making as much money as I am. And I tell you right now, I know that you are. I know that you are, baby. I mean, hey, cheers to all the capitalists throughout the world. Let me go ahead and take a swig of this. Once again, Johnny Walker Blue Label. I love it. It's a great blended malt scotch. Go ahead and take a swig of this. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, my God. I tell you that right goddamn now, baby. It tastes good, and I hope that everybody who's a capitalist is capitalizing today, baby, because let me tell you, I feel like going out tonight. You understand? <laughs> I feel like dropping like $600 on some goddamn, you know, four- or five-course dinner out here in Austin, Texas. You understand that? I mean, I feel like going out and getting myself a goddamn $1,500 bottle of Louis the Thirteenth. I mean, I feel like going out and, and contributing to the American economy. I mean, I just, I mean, I'm not even going to tell you how much money I made today because maybe your feelings will get hurt. But let me tell you something. I made some serious capital, and uh, I'm excited. I mean, I'm giddy, for Christ's sake. I'm giddy. <laughs> I'm giddy, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Anyway, let's continue going. Let's get to the commodities because, um, uh, Everything was up today. You know, there, there was no type of uh, consistency as far as the investing was concerned. Once the European Union, and that's the whole reason why we saw dramatic increases, folks, because the European Union had finally come to an agreement on how they're going to bail out these pissing ground socialist countries that are within their stupid union. And they finally come to an agreement, uh, which, in my personal opinion, folks, is more short term than anything else. Uh, in my personal opinion, I think that the EU is just kicking the can down the road uh, and waiting for this goddamn whole debt crisis to happen again. But I guarantee you, at least from now until the end of the year, you're going to see some bullish markets. And you better hop on that goddamn bandwagon and make some capital. And don't be sitting there like these Occupy Wall Street jerk dicks begging for a handout out here when you've got opportunities. Not only do you have opportunities, I mean, if you're listening to this broadcast... I'm shooting pearls here. I'm shooting pearls at you idiots. So not only do you have opportunities, but you've got somebody shooting pearls, shooting you information, and if it's just going to go uh, in one ear and out the other, that's your freaking problem. All right? That's your problem. But anyway, let's get to the commodities because they rose as well as uh, equities today. Once again, the EU has come up with some kind of agr an agreement uh, with its ridiculous debt crisis, and on top of that particular news coming out of Europe fueling the increase in equities, uh, did anybody see that the American economy grew more than expected? Yeah, for the third quarter, the American economy grew 2.5%. Now, that isn't a full economy. That isn't something you know dramatic, but it was way better than expected. Remember, uh, a lot of these so-called economists, a lot of these so-called experts – we're all over the business channels within the past several months saying that we're headed into a double-dip recession. The only person that wasn't saying that we're headed into a double-dip recession was me, all right? 
was me. And if you don't believe me, go back to the archive, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. I mean, I've been calling 13500 on the damn Dow Jones Industrials since last spring. So that's all. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Anyway, let, let's get to the commodities, and then I want to take your calls for Christ's sake. Let's continue going, shall we? <laughs> anyway, Brent crude is up today, majorly up. Brent crude oil, and for all you idiots that don't know what Brent crude is, it's the oil that's uh, shipped off and consumed by Europe and Asia. Brent crude is up $3.15 today, a percentage increase of 2.89%, closing out Brent crude at $112.06 per barrel of Brent crude oil. Gasoline futures saw a dramatic spike today. They're up $20.25, a percentage increase of 2.15% on the day. So let me tell you, like I've been saying, we're going to continue to see these increases at the gasoline pump because just look at the futures. Just look at the gasoline futures. Let's take a look at the WTI sweet crude prices, for Christ's sake. And how convenient these prices are going to go up right before the holidays. Isn't that right? Jesus Christ. Uh, anyway, where the hell was I? Let's continue going. We got heating oil futures up $8.32. That's a percentage increase of 2.76%. You know, them speculators are going to take advantage of this Arctic front that's supposed to be coming into the United States here uh I guess by this weekend, you know, so you know them speculators are out there getting their dibs on some of that heating oil future play, if you understand what I'm talking about. Let's continue going. Natural gas, modestly up today, up a penny, a percentage increase of 0.37%. And WTI sweet crude, folks, WTI sweet crude is the crude oil that is consumed by the United States. It is dramatically up. I mean, (laughs) Jesus Christ, just about three or four weeks ago, we saw WTI sweet crude prices at $70 a barrel. Look at it today. It is up $3.63, a percentage increase of, get this, 4.02% on the day today. All right? An increase of 4.02% on the day, closing out WTI sweet crude at $93.83 per barrel of WTI sweet crude, all right? I mean, that's major. I mean, you you know that not only are we going to start paying more prices at the pump, but you better well expect that we're going to pay more for all the damn items in the supermarket, all the items in the shopping malls, folks, because as I've said, the costs that are incurred from getting those products from point A to point B is relayed to the consumer, And if the petroleum prices are through the roof out here, well, the transporters of those goods getting from point A to point B still got to pay those prices. So as a result, they're going to relay it on to the consumer, and that's why you see an increase in a lot of these products out here during the times when we see gasoline prices through the wazoo. So that's why WTI sweet crude and the price of it is so goddamn important. Anyway, let's get to agriculture, shall we? Canola is up today, $4.80, and good God. (laughs) Did anybody see Coco? I really hope that you folks entertained the Coco play that I announced about four or five weeks ago. All right? I sincerely hope that you made some serious goddamn money. And I don't care if you invested in the actual Coco futures, if you invested in Coco equities in some fashion, if you made a play through that way, or you invested in... Coco ETFs. But either way, you made some major capital. I mean, you would at least be up about 25% on your goddamn money right now if you'd be listening to the True Capitalist radio broadcast four weeks ago. All right? I mean, let's take a look at cocoa prices, for Christ's sake. Cocoa is up $63 today. Jesus Christ. A percentage increase of 2.34% on the day. I mean, good God. (laughs) Oh, man, let me tell you something right now. I really hope that you folks are out there making some serious capital on these plays that I have suggested on this broadcast. I mean, that's why I do this broadcast, folks. I do this broadcast in hopes of making other people money, because if other people make money, that means other people are going to spend money. And if other people are going to spend money, that means other people are going to get jobs. And if other people are going to get jobs, that means the people that are going to get jobs are going to spend money, and it's going to be a great goddamn economy. So 
that's why I try to, you know, entertain these types of opportunities for folks that actually have a listening ear and not somebody that wants to, you know, get lols on some stupid eight-year-old jerk dick playing some stupid audio file on the goddamn phone on this broadcast. Jesus Christ. Anyway, let's continue going. Once again, the prognosticator of prognosticator strikes again with this Coco play. Let's continue going. Coffee, we've been seeing decreases in coffee throughout the week. Modest increase today. Coffee is up 90 cents. A percentage increase of 0.39%. And I know, I can already see the goddamn scrolls. Oh, you're on American, ghost. You're on American because you don't drink coffee. You're a sour sack of crap. Shove it up your asses, all of you people. I don't need coffee. All right, I don't need coffee. I'm naturally energized. I'm naturally vigorated, for Christ's sake. All I need is four hours sleep. I wake up and I'm motivated. I'm energized. You want to know what motivates me? Money. All right? I don't need so, some goddamn caffeine rush. I don't need some goddamn cup of coffee out here to make me motivated to get through the goddamn day. All right? All I need is that inspiration to continue going to make more and more capital, all right? And all you idiots that continue to say that I'm some kind of a, you know, I, I don't know, un-American jerk because I don't like coffee, hey, asshole, coffee is not made in America, you milky-licking piece of no intelligence having jerk dick. I mean, it's made by some sombrero-wearing, donkey-riding piece of crap named Juan Valdez, all right, out in South America. So for all you idiots that are out here talking garbage that I'm un-American because I don't care uh, about drinking coffee, you idiots don't know your asses from your elbow. I don't need to drink coffee. I'm naturally energized, baby, all right? And once again, I'm glad that nobody has told me recently that, uh, oh, dude, don't talk to me unless I have my coffee, dude. Don't talk to me unless I have my coffee. I'm glad nobody's told me that because I'm serious about kicking people's asses the next time they tell me that in my face. All right? I'm not joking. I'm seriously going to slap somebody in the mouth if they tell me that and say, oh, do you feel better now? Huh? You feel better? Pow! Right there in your mouth. How did that wake you up? Anyways, let me just calm down here. Uh, once again, coffee is up modestly, 90 cents today. But, Jesus Christ, did anybody see corn? I mean, we saw... Steady decreases within the past week on corn, but goddamn corn is up today. It is up $14.25, a percentage increase of 2.24% on the day. I mean, goddamn it with this goddamn corn prices, man. And once again, the only reason that we're seeing increases in corn is because of the tax-subsidized corn ethanol industry. That's right. Taxpayer money is going to subsidize this corn ethanol industry where America takes half of its corn yield and burns it in the gas guzzlers of people riding cars in America. I mean, that, that's basically the synopsis of this whole goddamn corn ethanol idea, all right? And that's why we're continuing to see the increases. So, And the reason I bring this up, the reason I'm, I'm kind of, you know, beating a dead horse here, you know, the... I'm beating a dead horse because, God damn it, it needs to be said. People need to know that the reason that they're paying so much for corn, the reason that they're paying for uh, so much for goods that utilize high fructose corn syrup as a component to its ingredients is because of this goddamn corn ethanol idea that's being subsidized by the taxpayers. And it needs to be said. Anyway, let's continue going. I don't want to talk about corn anymore. Let's talk about cotton a little bit. Now, cotton is continuing. I don't know what the hell's up with cotton. I mean, it continues to go up. It continues to increase in price, for Christ's sake. And today is absolutely no different. Cotton is up $4, a percentage increase of, get this, 3.99% on the day for cotton. An increase of 3.99% on the day. And, I mean, I guess that I'm just going to have to succumb to the idea that these Goddamn fruiters, you know, these males that are under the age of 35 nowadays are just going to continue to wear these fruity-ass fashion attire. You know, this Amber Crombie Fitch, this, uh, you know, ridiculous uh, Hollister, this Ed Hardy crap. I mean, we're just going to have to continue to accept this because the price of cotton is not going to go down. 
the price of cotton is not going to go down for Christ's sake. So once again, I mean, every time I walk home here in Austin, Texas, I got to walk home from my office to my house. I mean, I just pass by countless numbers of over feminized fruity asses that are wearing these goddamn Amber Crombie Fitch Hollister Ed Hardy goddamn ridiculous fashions. And these males are actually showing off the feminine features on their body through these goddamn clothing. I mean, haven't you noticed that? These goddamn ridiculous fruit bowl type attire out here, they're trying to show the prominent features of the femininity of males in America? Jesus Christ. Anyway, cotton is up. It, it looks like it isn't going to go down. It looks like we're going to continue to see these over-feminized estrogen-producing fruit bowls continuing to dress like they're unadulterated bitches. So let's just go ahead and move on. We got wheat futures up today, $22, a percentage increase of 3.07% on the day for damn wheat futures. Uh, sugar, once again, it is increased dramatically this week. Today is no different. Sugar is up 51 cents, a percentage increase of 1.94% on the day. We've got soybean futures spiking today, $24.25 on the increase, a percentage increase of 1.99%. Lumber is up modestly today, $1.60, a percentage increase of 0.69% for lumber. We've got oat futures up today, $3.50, a percentage increase of 1.06% on the day for oat futures. Soybean oil futures are up today, $1.22, a percentage increase of 2.40% on the day for soybean oil futures. And good God, good God, did y'all see the wool futures again today? I mean, good God. It looks like Rosie O'Donnell and Ellen DeGeneres just can't get get away from that all-you-can-eat buffet out there in the Wolves' futures, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I mean, good God, did anybody see wool again today? Wool is up $22, a percentage increase of 1.68% on the day. I mean, we've been, we've been announcing 1-plus percent increases on wool all week. I mean... I'm telling you, these bull-nosed bull dykes must like the smell of salmon or some fresh wool in the morning, because good Lord. Anyway, let's get to the metals, shall we? The metals! Let's get to the goddamn metals! Let me tell you, uh, everything is increased today, especially the metals. Now, copper, we were going to expect a dramatic spike in copper, because as I've always said, if we see an increase in equities... More than likely, we're going to see an increase in copper because copper is a major component to durable goods, appliances, a lot of retail components that are out here being sold and manufactured by a lot of companies in the equities markets. All right? So let me tell you something right now. If you um, typically see an increase in equities, and obviously you're going to see an increase in copper, and good God, did you see an increase in copper. Oh, my God. Did anybody see copper today? Copper is up $21.25, a percentage increase of, get this, I mean, you're going you're to flip out, 6.09% on the day for copper. 6.09% on the day for copper, for Christ's sake. I mean, what a spike. What a spike for copper. But let's continue going, shall we? Let's get to gold. Gold went up today. It was up $21.90, a percentage increase of 1.27% on the day, closing out gold at $1,745.40 per troy ounce of gold. And uh, let me tell you something, even though we saw an increase in gold, that isn't really the major story here. The major story is silver. Oh, my God, what have I been telling you about both of these metals, baby? What have I been telling you about both of these metals? You need to get on your goddamn surfboard and ride that wave, baby. Ride that wave. Ride that goddamn wave. I mean, did you see silver today? It is up $1.78. A percentage increase of, get this, 5.34% on the day today. 
5.34% on the day today. So let me tell you, if you are somebody who happens to have a lot of silver in your jewelry box, you just made, I guarantee you, 5.34% on your money today. Can you believe that? Can you believe that crap? I mean, you just made 5.34% on your money if you're one of these silver people that love silver, you know? Oh, my God. If you got a whole bunch of silver in your damn uh, jewelry box, you better hold on to it because, as I've said prior, uh, we're going to see silver prices hit $50 a uh, troy ounce again, all right? Right now, uh, silver is closed out at $35.09 per troy ounce, but let me tell you something. We are going to go back to the $50 range, possibly even surpassing that, and I'm just basing that on how this government continues to spend money. How this government continues to bail out everybody. Oh, let's bail out the people that wrote their names on, on contractual agreements that they can't fulfill via mortgages. Let's bail them out. Oh, let's bail out the student loan pricks who decided to you know, put themselves in debt about $90,000 so that they can get themselves an education. Oh, let's bail out everybody. All this spending, all this government spending is devaluing the value of the dollar. Why do you think things cost a lot more expensive these days. It's not just the fact that uh, manufacturers and retailers have to relay costs incurred, whether it's energy costs, uh, whether it's uh, raw material costs, or whether it's ingredients costs. Not only do they have to relay that to the consumer, but they actually have to increase their products at the rate of inflation. All right? And wh what is inflation? That means that the value of the dollar is going down because the government continues to print more of it. So, you know, once again, you know, I'm speculating that both of these metals, gold and silver, are going to be going way high. They should be high right now, but of course, we have meddling by the CME group, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, trying to water down these prices by raising margin requirements five times this year, which is unprecedented, I mean, which is obvious market manipulation, but the reason that the government isn't saying anything about it is because the government wants this type of market manipulation. They want the CME group to raise margin requirements so that it can lower the cost of gold and silver. Now, why would the CME group want to lower the cost of gold and silver? Well, remember, folks, the Obama administration bailed out Wall Street. The Obama administration, you know, g gave an open raid on the American taxpayer system. So these people that are within Wall Street owe Barack Obama, you know? And as a result, uh, this is why, in my personal opinion, we have the CME group raising margin requirements specifically and exclusively on gold and silver. Because the bottom line is, folks, is that if gold and silver are a lower price, if there's a low price on gold and silver, well, automatically an investor will believe that the dollar that it's being compared to is actually worth more than it is. And that's exactly what's happening here in the gold and silver market, folks. I mean, this gold price should be well over $2,000 a troy ounce. The goddamn silver price should be well above $50 a troy ounce. But unfortunately, because the CME group decided to raise margin requirements five times this year, causing people to sell their positions to offset their goddamn margin requirements, this is the reason why you're seeing such a low price on these goddamn commodities. All right? And you can thank Mr. Yes We Can for this crap. Anyway, let me continue going, all right? We, we are almost done with the markets. They don't want to take your call. Uh, let's see, livestock. We got live cattle futures down today, two cents, a percentage increase of 0.02%. We've got cattle feeder futures down 12 cents today. And for all you assholes that like to shove a couple of ham bones down your goddamn gullet, it looks like it's not going to cost you any more money today. Because lean hog futures are unchanged today. No movement whatsoever in lean hog futures. And, uh, you know, and before, and before I move on to anything else, the whole reason why I started the whole ham bone movement, you know, uh, is not for you assholes to call me a goddamn ham bone, all right? It's not for you idiots to use as terminology to insult me, you jerks. The reason that I 
suggested the whole ham bone connotation was so that folks that are out there in America that see these fat, bloated, disgusting cellulite dripping over their gut, covering their private part, disgusting, obese jerks rolling around in a goddamn motor scooter or in a hub around in a supermarket or in a goddamn shopping mall. The reason that I said or, or made up the ham bone movement was for you folks. When you see these fat, jelly-ass bastards acting like they own the goddamn place with their stupid motor scooters and their goddamn hover-rounds, instead of confronting these people, instead of directly confronting these people, because let me tell you, if you directly confront these fat, jelly bastards and call them the fat, jelly-ass tubberlards that they are, I'm, I don't know anymore. You may go down for a hate crime nowadays, you know? You may just go down for a goddamn hate crime. So instead of confronting these idiots... As you're passing them by, you know, as you're walking by these sorry sacks of, you know, cellulite, state puff marshmallow men people, all right, don't look at them, don't say a word to them, just say, Ambone. I mean, that's all you got to do, you know, fat, greasy ass, smelly Ambone. And I'm telling you right now, enough people pass by these fat, jelly ass bastards calling them ham bones, I guarantee you they're going to put the freaking fork down for about five minutes, all right? I guarantee you they're going to look at themselves with their fat, jelly-ass eyes in the mirror saying, Jesus Christ, i got to lose some goddamn weight. i got to lose some goddamn weight. And I'm not talking about, you know, people that are a little pot-bellied. I'm not talking about people that are a little uh, husky, like Navy husky. No, I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about fat, jelly bastards. I'm talking about jelly asses that got three or four rolls in the gut and rashes are, that are developing in between those rolls. I'm talking about those fat bastards, all right? I'm talking about the gut hanging over the, the private part area, and these people can no longer see what they're having in, in between their legs. I'm talking about fat, jelly ass bastards. I'm talking about so fat that when they, they tilt their head back, the, 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 the skin fat on the back of their neck turns into a pack of beef franks, all right, I'm talking about those fat bastards, anyway, that's about enough, I, 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 I'm done with this crap, anyway, that's the markets, folks, for your ass, all right, Jesus Christ, once again, I, I want to say that the whole reason why we saw this increase in the stock market is because of the EU finally getting their act together and coming up with some kind of temporary solution for this euro debt crisis. Moreover, the United States economy grew more than anticipated. I mean, remember, we've got so-called experts and economists out here saying, oh, we're headed into a double-dip recession. Mah, mah, mah. Well, for the third quarter, the American economy grew 2.5%. So once again, I'm telling you right now, I mean, I'm bullish I'm still standing by my prognostication that we're going to see Dow Jones Industrials 13,500 by the end of this year. And let me tell you something right now, man. I've been capitalizing. I mean, I made so much money today. I shouldn't even be doing this broadcast, man. I should be out there spending money. I should be contributing to the American economy out here. Uh, but I feel that I owe uh, a lot of the folks that are out there listening into the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, I feel that I owe these people. You know, I mean, I've been kind of... Uh, not necessarily as consistent with the broadcast, so I decided to come out here and, and do a show. Yeah. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and take a drink. Cheers to all the capitalists out there. It's Thursday. Tomorrow is Baller Friday, baby. <laughs> and let me tell you, you know, I made so much money here today, I don't even know if I'm going to have a Baller Friday tomorrow. All right? I don't know if I'm even going to have one tomorrow because I want to go out and spend some money, baby. You understand? I want to go out and you know buy my pads some more badass furniture and badass artwork. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, I'm thinking about buying me a new car, you know? Straight up, I'm thinking about buying me a Mercedes G-Series. Y'all ever heard of that? Oh, my God. I'm thinking about buying me a straight up uh, Mercedes G-Series, uh, G and there ain't a goddamn thing anybody can do about it, boy. <laughs> Woo, man. I'm just, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. I may or 
or may not have a baller Friday tomorrow. I may or may not. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Uh, let's go ahead and go into the first subject matter of the broadcast. And, of course, we've been talking about it for, Jesus Christ, what, about three or four or five weeks now? And I'm talking about Occupy Wall Street. Uh, Occupy Wall Street. Nah. Well, anyway, folks, um, I have been basically suggesting to the law enforcement of cities across America to start tear gassing and moving these dumb, ridiculous, bum idiots off the streets and putting them back in their homes where they belong. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, it's time for you idiots to go home. All right? I mean, it's enough of this ridiculous camping out, tent city, uh, you know, crapping in the street, uh, you know, criminal element type of garbage that you idiots are setting up in cities all across America. All right? I'm sick and tired of these stupid protests. All right? But anyway, um, in the process of some of these cities kind of uh, evicting a lot of these goddamn vagabonds and bums sleeping on the streets, unfortunately we have a problem in Oakland. Oh, that's right. The Oakland PD... I don't know. They were throwing canisters of tear gas or something, and, and, and one of the canisters of tear gas hit some poor schmuck in the head, all right? And as a result, uh, you know, this guy's in, you know, the hospital. You know, he's in intensive care. Uh, they may have to do surgery, so on and so forth. Well, the Occupy Wall Street jerk dicks are utilizing this as, I don't know, some sort of a propaganda-based opportunity, all right? Because uh, this individual, who happened to have been an Iraqi veteran, uh, this individual that got struck in the head by a tear gas canister, uh, they're actually uh, utilizing this opportunity to so-called cause a strike. Yeah, they're going to cause an all-out strike in Oakland. You know, they're calling on everybody who's working at any place, anywhere in Oakland, to just stop what they're doing and go on strike because, you know, with all due respect to the person that uh, got hit in the head with the uh, canister, what were you doing there, pal? Huh? I mean, seriously, what in the blue hell were you doing there? You're an Iraq War veteran, all right? You're out there in the middle, uh, you know, uh, between these clashes of protesters and police. I mean, what the hell are you doing there? I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, hey. I'm glad that the young man, you know, took it upon himself to commit himself to service in America. But let me tell you something right now. I mean, Occupy Wall Street, you're not going to use this as propaganda, all right? I mean, it's just a freaking canister that inadvertently got hit by, I mean, it hit somebody in the head accidentally, all right? This isn't the Iranian crackdown of 2009, assholes, all right? This isn't Syria where they're just mowing down people in the street, over 3,000 people dead, killing children, killing women, killing anybody in sight, all right? This has nothing, to, this, is, this is nothing like that, all right? Some schmuck that shouldn't even have been in Occupy Oakland got inadvertently hit in the head by a goddamn tear gas canister, and it's an unfortunate situation. I mean, the police didn't intentionally uh, want to shoot somebody in the head with a gas canister, you morons. All right? I mean, these people weren't out there trying to hurt people. They're out there trying to dispense the mob. They're trying to dispense this ridiculous mob out there in front of their goddamn city hall in Oakland, for Christ's sake. But, no, you got Occupy Wall Street out here utilizing this as some kind of, I don't know, opportunity to be like, um, I think that we need to strike Oakland. We need to strike. That's what we need to do. And we're going to go across America, all across America, every single Occupy Wall Street protest, we're going to go and march in solidarity. Oh, we're going to march in solidarity. Oh, shut up. All right? Just shut your stupid stinking hole. Let me tell you something right now, man. You goddamn Occupy Wall Street protesters are goddamn lucky that us capitalists actually have, have a life, that we actually have to go out and work. You know, we have responsibilities, because let me tell you something right now. I'm sure that every capitalist, if they had spare time, 
would follow me into these goddamn Occupy Wall Street protests and personally evict these sons of bitches ourselves. Do you understand? I'm not joking, all right? I'm not kidding. We would personally go down there and evict these sons of bitches ourselves. But you see, we got, uh, unfortunately, we got, we got jobs, you know? We got uh, things that we got to take care of. We're not a bunch of bum vagabonds you know, able to camp out in the middle of the street taking, you know, craps and pisses in the street and, you know, thinking that's a great day in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, huh? <laughs> I mean, give me a goddamn break, all right? And let me tell you something right now. Anybody who's going to utilize this particular isolated incident of this Iraqi veteran getting hit in the head with a gas canister as an opportunity to go out and get uppity, across America, let me tell you something, you're making the biggest mistake of your lives. You understand that? You're making the biggest mistake of your lives. Because us capitalists, we've been very patient with you idiots. We've been very patient with all of you damn bums out here, uh, you know, banging your bongos and, you know, practicing your freaking yoga, taking craps in the street and all this other nonsense. But uh, you keep this up. Us capitalists aren't going to stay quiet that much longer, all right? I mean, do you understand, you stupid waste of life out there in Occupy Wall Street? You're a detriment to society. You people don't contribute a goddamn thing. I mean, you know, what's really sad is that all most of you idiots out there at these Occupy Wall Street protests are supposed to be educated. You're supposed to be educated, and yet your supposed educated mind can't comprehend the fact that you idiots... Instead of going out there pissing and moaning and camping out in front of city halls demanding handouts, why don't you go out and, and get a freaking job? Why don't you go out and get freaking money? You know, I've been telling people, hey, if you don't have an opportunity, if, if you're out there starving to death, why don't you go out there and make money, all right? Go out there and buy a dozen roses at a goddamn grocery store and sell them at a club or sell them on a street corner, all right? I mean, go out there and, and, and get yourself a goddamn Polaroid camera, go to the goddamn club section at nighttime, and just start going up to schmucks and saying, hey, you want a picture? Hey, you want a picture? Charge about five or ten bucks a pop. I mean, Jesus Christ, how hard is this? How hard is it to make money in this country? I mean, I, and I even suggested this to these Occupy Wall Street jerk dicks, since all these people have so much time on their hands, and not to mention that you have all these idiots in these Occupy Wall Street protests, they all have electronic widgets like iPods and iPhones and iPads and all this other nonsense. Huh? Why don't they utilize all that time, effort, energy, and technology to help uh, you know, some of these goddamn uh, cold cases that are out here uh, that are unsolved in police departments? I mean, do you understand that if you help solve some of these cases out here that you can get minimum 5000 bucks a pop? Huh? 5000 bucks. Sometimes there's even private money put forth that'll even make it even more. But are these people, you know, thinking about surviving? Are these people thinking about how to make money? Are these people thinking about how they can progress their futures? No. They're just out there demanding free money. I mean, you're talking about the epitome of greed. You know, you got these assholes in Occupy Wall Street talking about how they're fighting greed. These are the greedy pricks. These are the disgusting, greedy scoundrels of the world, for Christ's sake. I mean, these are the biggest threats to society. Assholes who don't want to take any kind of initiative with their lives whatsoever and just go out there in mass quantities and demand free money. I mean, you're talking about the epitome of greed. I mean, good God. I mean, you're talking, I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, you, you, all you idiots on Occupy Wall Street should be ashamed of yourselves. I mean, you idiots are the greedy ones. You assholes sitting over here, hey, throw me a bone, yeah, pay for my goddamn stupid student loan. Oh, throw me a bone, yeah, you give me a housing voucher program. Shut up. Shut your stupid, stinking mouths. All right? What you stupid, so-called educated, Occupy Wall Street jerk dicks don't understand is that we're sitting here in a contradiction of humanity. We are witnessing a contradiction within humanity, and that contradiction is this idea that we have to clothe and house and feed every human being as if every human being is God's special creature. 
You understand what I'm saying? I mean, this is the biggest contradiction on the earth, and we need to start talking about it, all right? I mean, uh, this idea that we have to sit here and clothe and house and feed every human being goes against the fabric of this realm, of this earth, of nature itself. I have said this time and time again. If you observe nature, if you go out into the woods, uh, if you go out in, you know, to where there's going to be wild animals, or just check out National Geographic, I mean, every living organism on this planet has to kill and eat another living organism to survive and sustain itself in this world. Every living organism, all right, every living organism has to kill and eat another living organism to survive and sustain itself. And somewhere along the line, these idiot political romanticists and all these other assholes that claim that, oh, every human being has to be fed, every human being has to be clothed, every human being has to be housed. I mean, where this notion came from, I have no fucking idea. Excuse my French, but I have no goddamn idea. But it needs to be stopped. Because the biggest threat to America, the biggest threat to the world, the biggest threat to all of us are these stagnant individuals who refuse to be productive members of world society. And that's exactly what these goddamn Occupy Wall Street jerk dicks represent. They represent the jerks that are a threat to world society because they refuse to contribute to society itself. And how do you contribute? How do you contribute to society? Get a freaking job, you stupid losers, all right? I don't give a crap what you do for a living. I don't care if you clean enema bags for a living or you clean the leftover secretions at a triple X theater after a night session, all right? If you're getting paid, if you're paying taxes and you're not collecting government entitlements, well, then by God, you are a capitalist. You are making a contribution to society. Your word should supersede those that just want to do nothing but expect a handout, expect an entitlement. I mean, do you understand the whole idea of capitalism? I mean, one can basically motivate themselves individually, all right? I mean, one can literally motivate themselves individually and go out for their own individual purposes and still help the collective by default. But no, we, we are under this warped idea in humanity that we have to house and clothe and feed every human being. And we can't continue doing this. We are raping the earth. We are robbing natural resources I mean, we're turning perfectly good food into shit. Natural resources are becoming scarce. We just hit 7 billion people. Just imagine, that's 7 billion people. That's 7 billion assholes that take craps and fart, all right? That's 7 billion blowholes of people breathing in and out their goddamn hot air and talking their insignificant banter that isn't going to make one bit of difference, for Christ's sake, all right? I mean, this is 7 billion people that, let's be honest, a good 90, 85% of them do absolutely nothing, contribute absolutely nothing, nor have an initiative to contribute anything. So what I'm saying is, folks, is that the elites of this goddamn world need to realize that we can no longer continue this charade of, Ah, every human being is God's special creature. We can't keep going this way. We can't keep giving our misdirected empathy towards those that put themselves in the predicaments that they're in. We can no longer have this false compassion for assholes who put themselves in the predicaments out of their own free will. So that's what I'm saying, folks. All right. The bottom line is, is that all this Occupy Wall Street nonsense, all these protests... All this political romanticism, all this disgusting, ridiculous, misdirected empathy, it has to stop. It has to stop. Anyway, folks, I want to hear from you. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. Let's take a couple of cap uh take a couple of goddamn uh, calls here, see what you gotta say about it. 
781, what's up? What do you think about Occupy Wall Street? I love AIDS. It's a very good thing. What? Is that your mom in the background? Let me talk to your mom. No. No, I want to talk to that whore. Let me let me talk to her right now. I hear her. Come on. Let me see. I know she's a cougar. No. Come on. Let me talk to that slut. Come on. Come on. I want to tell her I want her to sit on my fucking apple. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Give me a break. Let's call that son of a bitch back. All right? I want to talk to his mother. That's what. Did y'all hear his mother in the background? I want to talk to that son of a bitch's mother. Let's call him back. Call him back, engineer. Call his ass back, cause uh, let me tell you something right now. I didn't re- I didn't hear what he said. I think he, he tried to say something vulgar to me, but I didn't hear him. So let's see if we can get him on the horn here. All right, got him, engineer. Yeah. See what we got. <phone rings> Call him back. Pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. What's up, boss? Hey, what's up? Here, why don't you take over the oh, show for a second? Go ahead. Take over the show. All right. Um, let's see. Capitalism is about money. You seem like a fucking greedy bastard from Texas who's arrogant, uh, intolerant, ignorant, and only cares about himself. You seem very selfish. Uh, you only talk about yourself, your money, going out on the town. Meanwhile, you live in Texas. That's... Not much of a nice place. You should probably move somewhere. Uh, better place. Better place. Anything to say about that, big guy? No. Oh, shit. I took over the show. Uh, so what's up, guys? Uh, I'm trying to uh, fuck around with my IP because I'm banned from something. So I'm just uh, trying to get through that. But uh, and my mom's doing you know, that. you know, you're, you know, you really suck. Yeah. Put your mom on the phone. Put your mom on the horn. I want to talk to her. She sounds like she's probably got no, a right. No, no, no. She's on the phone herself. She, she's what? on the phone herself. She's on the phone herself. Well, p- put her on. I want to. I want to talk to her. Crusted phone tang having ass. I Go can't. ahead. Come she, on. She is having some business right now. Uh, having some business. But, uh, is she talking? Is she talking to an you're ethnic a minority? You're a son of a bitch. You know that. She's she talking to an ethnic kind of minority. She's trying to get the high hard one from. Uh, Tyrone or something, huh? Met at an Applebee. She's like, yeah, Tyrone, my son's going to be going to sleep at 9 o'clock because he's a little pussy with feminized fruit bowl brony. But you come out here after 9, baby, and it's on like Donkey Kong. Am I right? Yeah, I can play Donkey Kong right now. What? I can play Donkey Kong right now. I have an Atari in my room. Uh, you, you you sound like a mumbling, stumbling little jerk. Can, can you please put your mom on the horn? I want to talk to that slut bag. Uh, no, no. She's Come on, I want to talk to her. Give me her number then. I'll Please put you rage on. harder. Rage harder. Rage harder. Rage harder. Jesus you Christ! Too. There's no father, right? No father there. I I, I bet you oh, there's no father. father there, right? There's a father. Yeah, you're lying your ass off. Not talking like that. You're not. You don't have no freaking father. We and if you do have a father, hey, a if you have a father and he's living with you, he father. should be rolled. He should be rolled for you know producing some faggy type garbage like yourself out of his nutsack. All right? Seriously. All right? I mean, I'm not joking. Support your argument. All right. Enough Why am I fat? Get, get this fruity ass. Get him off, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. You know, I'm really sick of these over-feminized fruit bowls, man. I mean, you know, you, if you know that you have a feminized voice, why don't you at least try to sound deeper? Huh? Why don't you at least try I mean, you know, you know that you were a man, right? You know that in between your leg, you know, even though you're tucking your sack back, you got a pair of balls there, right? Well, why don't you try to act like a man and sound like a man? You know, instead of a oh uh, hello, um yeah, my name is Jonathan, and uh, I'm gonna shut up. Jesus Christ. Anyway, we're supposed to be talking about Occupy Wall Street. I want to hear from you. What do you got to say about it? Area code 318, what do you think about Occupy Wall Street? How come everybody who calls up is apparently a fruit ball? Well, I, 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 you know, your guess is as good as mine, sir. You know, I was completely unaware how many fruity-ass, you know, poop-shoot-loving, uh, flesh-flute-playing, Muff divers that we've got going on out here in the True Capitalist Radio Show contingent. I mean, I was unaware that there were this many 
fruit bowls listening to the broadcast. Now, I mean, your guess is as good as mine why they listen to this broadcast. I mean, maybe, just maybe, they're in complete freaking awe. Complete freaking awe at the manly dominance that I'm throwing around this goddamn broadcast like it ain't shit. Maybe that's why, huh? <laughs> Maybe that's why, but I don't know. I, I don't know why everybody's a fruit bowl. I, I really have no idea, all right? But that's a good question there, 318. You sound like one, too, so I'm going to hang up on your ass. So uh, uh, call back when you got a pair. 818, what's up? What do you think about Occupy Wall Street? Well, Ghost, I just want to say that that guy uh, that called before was a pretty beast-ass motherfucker. Was a, was a deep-ass motherfucker? What did you say? Hell no. He's like the best troll ever. Come on, Ghost. Gotta respect that stuff. What are you talking about? You said something about a deep ass. I mean, what? get this idiot. Get him off, for Christ's sake. He's looking for loose asses out here. Jesus Christ. Anyway, we're already in the second hour of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. We're talking a little bit about this Occupy Wall Street nonsense. They're calling on a strike in Oakland because, unfortunately, in the process of the Oakland PD evicting these vagabonds uh, off the streets, uh, one of these tear gas canisters hits some schmuck in the head, and now he's in intensive care, he's in the hospital, and now these Occupy Wall Street pricks are utilizing this as an opportunity to, oh, we're going to preach solidarity. That's what we're going to do. We're all going to march in every Occupy Wall Street protest all across the country. We're going to march to their city halls in solidarity. I mean, give me a freaking break, all right? I spit on you, Occupy Wall Street assholes. Tua! Tua! I spit on you, assholes! Six four six six five two four eight six nine is the number to call. Before we take any more callers, I hate to even ask the goddamn engineer, but hey, engineer, do we have any damn shout outs to be given out? Uh, Alright, according to the engineer, we've got ourselves a few uh got ourselves a few shout outs to be given out. And for you folks that are unaware, uh all you've got to do is follow me on Twitter. Alright, the Twitter account to follow is ghost politics, all one word, no underscores, ghost politics, all right? And we're going to do a little bit different, all right? We're going to do a little bit different today. Instead of retweeting the first tweet, I want everybody to tweet at me, all right? I want everybody to tweet at me and put the hashtag, what's a good hashtag we can put out here? How about a hashtag of uh, uh, uh Ghost money, all right? Ghost money. That's that's a good hashtag. There's the hashtag right there, all right? Tweet at me with that hashtag, ghost money, and I will give you a shout-out right here, right now, on the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. This ain't no BS, all right? Ghost money, all right? You got to put ghost money in the hashtag, baby, all right? If you don't, you're just going to be some milky-licking piece of nipple clamp, loving, butt lug up the ass, looking, wish you had a shout-out on the True Capitalist Radio prick, all right? That's all there is to it. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, let's see who we got here. See if anybody uh, anybody here wants a shout out here. We got Mr. Menstruation. Oh, Jesus Christ. We got some idiot named R.I.P. Gaddafi. You stupid sack of crap. We got somebody named Jake Schuler. Uh, we got Freeze Org. Uh, we've got uh, Race Cars in Fuego. Yeah, that's pretty. That's that's screwed up. All right. Making fun of that, uh, you know, what that, that racer, that uh, indie car racer for Christ's sake, that took a damn, uh, what was it, the tire to the head? Jesus Christ! We've got Daniel Butler, '96, in the place. Uh, we've got somebody named NWO Informant. Oh Jesus Christ! Who else we got? We got Me Cougar Wife. Me Cougar Wife. Yeah, shove it up your ass. We've got Anonymous Plumo in the place. We got. Uh, what is this? Rebel T-Bone. Rebel T-Bone in the house. What's up, brother? How you doing? That's my man, Rebel T-Bone. How you doing, baby? Uh, we got Trixie and Fuego. We've got uh, T-Bag Lentil Soup. We've got Smojin 87 What's going on? We've got Autistics for Ghost. Yeah, that's what we need. we got Ward 24. What's going on, Ward? How you doing, man? 
Who else we got going on here? We got SP Lee 360. Uh, we've got uh, Prince Excrement. Uh, we got PXUL in the place. Uh, we got somebody named A Fat Man tweeting at us. Count Dracula 25. Uh, we've got Orf 83. What's going on, Orf? Good to hear from you, man. Uh, we've got Pack Wolf in the house. We've got The Rock 8884 in the place. Uh, who else do we got? I mean, we're, we're, I mean, we're taking we're taking goddamn Twitter shoutouts right here, right now. Uh, we got I Claw Ponies. Uh, we've got somebody named Mike Hunt Stink. Uh, we got Go Stole My EBT. Yeah, real funny jerk. Uh, we've got uh, Steve versus Cancer. Oh, come on, come on with that crap, man. Let the man rest in peace. Jesus Christ. And I don't appreciate some of the jokes that you assholes have been tweeting about uh, Steve Jobs at me about. I mean, one asshole tweeted me saying, hey, uh, right before Steve Jobs died, uh, his life would have flashed before his eyes, but uh, Apple doesn't accept flash, so... <laughs> Stupid assholes. Who else do we got? We're going to give a couple more shout-outs, and then we're going to move on to the broadcast. Who we got? We got... Uh, we got Gary Oak. Eh, shut up, Gary Oak. Here we got we got Death Metal Fan sixty six. Uh, we've got uh, Care Bears for Ghost. Screw the Care Bears, all right. Screw the Care Bears, all right. Care Bears were stupid. They were just as stupid as that ridiculous Teddy Ruxpin. Y'all remember that stupid toy, Teddy Ruxpin? You know they they put a goddamn tape player in the ass of some goddamn teddy bear, and that is supposed to somehow what? Be interactive entertainment for children? I mean, it had metal parts and crap. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to, you know, go off on Care Bear or uh, Tutty Ruxpin or whatever the hell, but uh, that's all there is to it. Uh, who, who else we got going on? We got Lunar Witch in the house. Uh, we've got, uh, I'm not going to say that name for Christ's sake. We got uh, Turkey Be Shaken. Uh, that's it. That's enough. Cut it off, engineer. I'm not going to accept any more goddamn tweets, all right? All right, I mean, we don't need any more rumbling turkeys, shaking turkeys, shaking bacon turkeys. We don't need any more of this crap, all right? There's nothing funny about that. People are dying uh, because of this natural disaster. People are buried under rubble out here, and these people don't even care. These people are sick. Jesus Christ. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying any more, all right? I'm telling you right now, you idiots are lucky that I'm even here, all right? I made so much goddamn money in the markets, you people are lucky that I am even here. And if you keep this crap up, I'm going to just end this broadcast faster than you can say, huh? Telling you this right now, don't mess with me today, all right? Don't mess with me today! Anyway... We're supposed to be talking about Occupy Wall Street here. Let me see if we can take a couple more calls, see if we can get some kind of conversation going about Occupy Wall Street. If not, we're moving on to the next subject matter. we got area code 847. What's up? You're on the horn. Hey, what's going on? How you doing? What do you think about Occupy Wall Street? I just think that I'm, I'm surprised that they're still out there, you know, wasting their time. Yeah, well, that's because they don't have jobs. They don't, they don't have anything. They're, they're losers. They don't want to go out and get one. I mean, you would think all the time and effort and energy they have out there, what has it been, two months? I mean, that could have been two months they could have been looking for a job. Am I correct? Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and instead, what are they doing? They're, they're taking craps in the street. Uh, they're peeing on each other. Uh, you know, they're having, you know, sexual dirty orgies out there where, I mean, it's, it's, it's disgusting, man. It's disgusting. I mean, uh, were you for or against this when this uh, initial Occupy Wall Street movement started? Uh, well, I was kind of on the fence for this, but now I'm, like, against it. No, I don't blame you. You should be against it, 847. I mean, what these idiots are doing, these assholes in Occupy Wall Street, they're trying to take away opportunities from you. You see, here you are, uh, 847, you sound like a young kid. Uh, you don't, you don't, you haven't even had a chance to be able to live your own life. You haven't even had a chance to go out and make your own money, to accumulate your own assets. Here you've got these people in Occupy Wall Street trying to take away that opportunity from you. I hope that everybody that's under the age of 18 listening to my broadcast takes note for 
for what these idiots in Occupy Wall Street are doing wrong. All right? They're doing completely wrong. I mean, if they wanted to protest the legitimate culprits of these goddamn so-called Occupy Wall Street pro if they wanted the culprits of the bailouts, that's what they want. They want the corporate, uh, the culprits of the Wall Street bailouts. They need to go to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Go to the White House, baby. Go to the White House. They're the ones that gave the goddamn bailouts to Wall Street. They're the ones that are holding these fundraising dinners at $35,000 a plate. And who's going to those Democratic fundraising dinners? That Obama is speaking at all across the country at this point in time? None other than Wall Street executives. Oh, isn't that great? I mean, and there needs to be something investigated here, because you got to think. Barack Obama gave our tax dollars to Wall Street so they can recapitalize their goddamn bad investments, uh, so they can continue their uh, Wall Street uh, executive bonus bailouts and balloon payments and all this other nonsense. And, you know, what's really boggling to my mind is that our taxpayer dollars went to Wall Street. Now Wall Street is paying uh, Barack Obama and the Democratic Party $35,000 a plate for these fundraising dinners. I mean, doesn't it seem like uh, the Democratic Party funneled taxpayer money to Wall Street so it can go right into the pockets of the politicians that gave them that money? I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, it just seems kind of funny that you've got the Obama administration that basically gave Wall Street all the capital that these idiots in Occupy Wall Street are bitching about. And now that Barack Obama is running for re-election of 2012, who are the people going to these fundraising dinners at $30,000 a plate? The same people that Barack Obama gave our tax dollars to. And do you see these Occupy Wall Street jerk dicks out there protesting? No. Do you want to know why? Because reports have come out recently that guess who's behind these ridiculous protests all across the country? Guess who's behind the organizational aspect of these goddamn protests? None other than that little organization that caused voter fraud. I'm talking about ACORN. That's right. ACORN has a lot to do with what has transpired across the country via these Occupy Wall Street protests. And if you don't believe me, you need to do a goddamn Google search and see what is exactly behind all this disgusting bum vagabond revolution that us, the capitalists, just have to sit here and accept from these disgusting losers. ACORN. Acorn are the individuals behind this disgusting, despicable bum revolution. You know it, and I know it. The same people that committed voter fraud to elect Barack Obama president in 2008, Acorn, are the same culprits behind all this organizational mass chaos across the country. And that's all there is to it. And if you don't believe me, you go out and do a Google search for yourself. Stupid assholes. Anyway, I'm going to move on to another subject matter because it, it, it just seems obvious to me that nobody really cares about Occupy Wall Street. And anybody who does care, they're just going to call me up and say, um, you don't know what you're talking about, Ghost. Um, um, you know, uh, Occupy Wall Street is about, uh, it, it's about solidarity uh, of the 99%. And uh, now shut your stinking, smelly salmon hole. Give me a damn break. Anyway, let's move on to another subject matter. Let's talk about another Democratic darling that everybody loved and appreciated and thought was the second coming that could have been the next president. I'm talking about John, hypocritical, cheating on a dying wife, Edwards himself. That's right, John Edwards. He's headed for trial, folks. He's headed for trial for misappropriating campaign funds. And for you folks that are unaware with what John Edwards exactly did, Let me go ahead and recant what he did. On top of John Edwards cheating and having a love child out of wedlock behind his dying wife's back, all right, he actually utilized campaign funds that were donated by contributors. He funneled those funds into the pocket of this dirty dishrag whore that he banged and had a kid out of wedlock with. 
And now that investigators found out about this, they're trying to bring him to justice for it. Well, John Edwards, I guess he thinks he's the best lawyer money can buy because he did make what, a couple hundred million bucks on uh, you know taking people to litigation. <laughs> Uh, you know, he, yeah, that's how he made his money. That's how he's, that's why he's worth a couple of hundred million bucks. He's just sued people and extorted the money out of their pockets. All right. Well, anyway, John Edwards, I guess he thought he was the the best money, money uh, best lawyer money could buy. He tried to dismiss the case. He actually went up to the judge, tried to file a dismissal, and the judge went, ah, uh, no. And now John Edwards is going to have to go to trial. And let me tell you something. It's going to be a great day. A great goddamn day in American history when that stupid loser goes to jail for being the disgusting, despicable, hypocritical liberal that he is. All right? That's right. I mean, the bottom line is is that he's going to go to jail because he funneled campaign funds into the pocket of this disgusting, despicable whore bag that he was banging on the side while his wife was dying of cancer. This is why he's being tried, misappropriation of campaign funds. And I'm going to tell you, I've been looking at this case. I've been looking at all the information. I think that everything is going to lead this man into a guilty verdict. And I can't wait to see the look on that disgusting asshole's face, you know, Mr. Pretty Boy himself. I cannot wait to see his face when they say guilty as charged for misappropriating campaign funds, for Christ's sake. I want to see this son of a bitch in jail, all right? I want to see him in jail, fucking John Edwards, you piece of trash. I I mean, you know, it's bad enough that he's a fraud. You know, it's bad enough that he was misappropriating campaign funds uh, to this broad that he was banging on the campaign trail and had a love child with. But on top of that, he cheated on his dying wife. Your your wife was dying, asshole. She had terminal cancer. I mean, you couldn't keep it in your pants for uh, you know a good year, two years before you know this poor lady croaked, so you can go out and become some goddamn teenage boy again, for Christ's sake. I mean, what kind of a sick son of a bitch not only screws his, behind his dying wife's back, but has a love child with her, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ! Anyway, I want to hear from you. What do you think about John Edwards, huh, Mr. Uh, Vice Presidential Candidate uh, himself? Remember John Kerry, John Edwards? Remember in 2008 he tried to run for president until all this damn ridiculous scandal about John Edwards banging some bitch on the goddamn campaign trail started coming to light. And then the misappropriation of the campaign funds started coming to light. So once again, John Edwards, I hope not only do you go to prison, I hope that you find, you know, some kind of, I don't know, integrity within yourself to take, just just, just to kill yourself, Mr. Edwards. I mean, you know, when they throw you in jail, you should take the bed sheets, put it around your neck, and choke yourself to death, you sorry sack of crap. I mean, I cannot respect anybody who's going to cheat on a dying wife. She was dying, man. She was dying. And not only did he bang some disgusting whore bag behind her back, but he had a love child that he was trying to hide with campaign funds. Can you believe this, Graham? Campaign funds. You know what, Elizabeth Edwards, I hope that you're resting in peace right now. Because I think that it was a shame that you stood by this particular piece of trash. You backed him up his whole goddamn career, politically, and when he was a lawyer, so on and so forth, only to be slapped in the mouth by this disgusting, stupid $500 haircut asshole because he couldn't keep it in his pants. And and it's bad enough he couldn't keep it in his pants. He couldn't find somebody that was decent looking, for Christ's sake. Have you seen the mistress that this idiot banged, for Christ's sake? I mean, she looks like she's swallowing her face. I'm not joking. She looks like she's swallowing her face, for Christ's sake. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I want to hear from you. What do you, what do you, what do you think about this? What do you think about John Edwards? Huh? He's going out there for trial now. I can't wait to see this on TV. I hope that they have cameras in the courtroom. 
because I want to see that disgusting mug of John Edwards as all the facts are unearthed about his disgusting, hypocritical, nefarious, devious ways. I want to hear from you. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. What do you think about John Edwards, baby? I want to hear from you. Area code 617. What do you think about John Edwards? Go every day, man. Still haven't had my damn coffee. <laughs> Yeah, who cares, all right? I hope you got a hot cup of coffee in your face. 609, what's up? What do you think about John Edwards? John Edwards is like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He sucks. That way, well, you know, at least Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, didn't use campaign f- funds to, you know, basically pay off that disgusting uh, uh, maid broad that he was banging. And uh, not to mention uh, that at least Maria Shriver wasn't dying, all right? Uh, but no, no, I'm not going to try to give Arnold Schwarzenegger any kind of uh, leeway on this. I also think he's a piece of trash. I mean, you know, first of all, Arnold, why exactly are you going to get all buffed up and get all these muscles and, you know, be built and, oh, yes, I am a man, and I am Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I get to the chopper! Why are you going to do all that when you're... A fair tale, you know, the the tale that you're cheating with is that disgusting, pathetic, useless vieja. I even forgot her name. I mean, did you see this broad? This broad looked like Roberto Duran with a freaking wig, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, Schwarzenegger, I mean, you, you would think with all those goddamn muscles and, hey, look at me, I'm Mr. Fit, I'm Mr. In Shape and all this other nonsense, you'd be banging some of this tale that's out here waiting to be picked, if you will, like, uh, what's that one uh, whore that's banging everybody now, what the hell's her name? That one broad that was banging Larry David, now she's uh, black, banging that one fool from Lars and the Real Girl, I forgot her goddamn name, but you, you could have hopped on her, you know what I mean? You could have hopped on uh, Terry Thatcher, you know? You could have hopped on any of these loose, loosey slut bags out here in Hollywood. Why in the hell did you hook up with somebody that looks like George Lopez in a freaking wig, Schwarzenegger. Jesus Christ. Anyway, we're not talking about uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. We're supposed to be talking about John Edwards here. I want to hear what you have to say about it. All right? Area code 520, what do you think about John Edwards? You stupid idiot. 609, what do you think about John Edwards? Stupid moron. 404, what do you think about John Edwards? I think that guy is a gangster, and I want to be just like him when I grow up. Well, unfortunately, you're not, because you sound so fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops. You'll probably be bent over at some bathhouse out there, taking any meat in the can that'll put it. Uh, area code 478, what's up? What do you think about goddamn John Edwards? Ghost, baby, it's your brother from another mother. How oh, you doing today, Ghost? Christ. Christ. God damn it, what do you want? Look, baby, look, I-, I wanted to tell you about me and Pookie done came up with a legitimate company, Ghost, and we about to make some money. And a I- legitimate I- company? I mean, wh- where are you getting your funding for this legitimate company? Well, that's why I'm calling you, Ghost. We need some, uh, you know, we need some venture capitalists like you just to help us out with this company. Why yeah, would I, I mean, help you, for Christ's sake? you already taken probably hundreds of thousands of dollars out of my tax pan pocket. Why in the hell would I help your ass? Because, baby, you're a capitalist. You're trying to make money, right? I got a scheme that can make some money. Why wouldn't you want to do that, Ghost? A scheme that'll make money, huh? Well, well, well what's your goddamn scheme? Why don't you enlighten us on this crap? Let me tell and, you something. And I stop, will... Hey, and stop torturing that kid already, for Christ's sake. Put a clean diaper on that son of a bitch. Put a pacifier in its mouth. Put a goddamn bottle of milk in its mouth or something, for Christ's sake. Good Lord. Well, you know, it's, you know, the first day till Monday, so the cover's kind of empty, but I'm doing the best I can, Ghost. But, uh, listen, here, here, here's the company me and Pookie talking about. It's, uh, it's DDI, Doggy Dinners Incorporated, right? Basically, I was looking over the PETA website, and there's over 9 million animals euthanized every year. So we're going to take these animals, we're going to deep freeze them, we're going to send them over to countries that ain't got food, ghosts. We're going to take dogs and cats and stuff like that, freeze the meat, send them over to these countries that ain't got food. We're going to sell them, you know, like $3 a dog, ghost. Three dollars a dog. That's all it'll take. Get, get this idiot. Get him off, for Christ's sake. What, what did you watch, the naked gun last night, you dumb idiot? I mean, doesn't Leslie Nielsen say that? 
you know, when he's at that part where he's supposed to be at the Oscars and he's talking about how cats, uh, you know, there are so many cats out there that they should be skinned alive uh, to keep poor people warm and their meat to, you know, keep people from, you know, starving, so on and so forth. Come on. I heard that on the Naked Gun one. You know it and I know it. Stupid idiot. Get your own material. 781, what's up? Well, it looks like somebody's trying to act like me over there. How about uh, 779? What's up? You're on the horn. Hey, Ghost. How are you doing today? How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. Um, we here at the um, Anti-Texas Pony Canadian Club. Oh, man. Hey, you're going to laugh at your own freaking joke, for Christ's sake. Uh, you're gonna laugh at your no, own no, joke. Hear me out. Hear me out, goes. Hear me out, goes. No, no, out. you know what? Uh, shut out. your stupid, shut your stupid Canadian bacon mouth up for Christ's sake. All right? Why don't you go suck on old one ball Tom Green sack for Christ's sake and tell somebody who cares? All right? I mean, let me tell you something. There's nothing worse I hate in the world than idiots that laugh at their own freaking jokes for Christ's sake. I mean, seriously, people like that should be repeatedly beating the balls with an acne brick so they can no longer reproduce. All right, area code 617. What's up? You're on the horn. Man, just playing with your goddamn Peter Popper, for Christ's sake. 813, you're on the horn. Ghost, I want to, like, melt the trans out of your asshole. Yeah, well, Jesus Christ, you're a disgusting piece of crap. I'll tell you that right now. I mean, what's up with you idiots and licking asses anyway? I mean, what is up with that crap, you know? I mean, that orifice was not meant for your tongue to be gracing. You understand what I'm saying, you stupid idiots? Huh? I mean, that's where waste comes out, you know? You disgusting, despicable losers, for Christ's sake. I mean, that's where large quantities of poop comes out, for Christ's sake. You disgusting waste of human life. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. And all you people that are like, oh, I, I do it to my girl. I hope you get gangrene of the mouth, asshole. Uh, 702, what's up? You're on the air. Yep, yep, playing with the Peter Popper. 717, what's up? I think your orifice is made for a licking ghost. Oh. Huh. Jesus Christ. I mean, does anybody notice the feminine vernacular of these idiots making these gay jokes? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know that your integrity and your pride are absolutely non-existent when you're actually utilizing homoerotic jokes to supposedly make your side of the persuasion look, uh, I don't know, uh, that much more ridiculous. I have no idea. I have no idea. Area code 410, what's up? You're an inspiration for birth control. Why are you even thinking about birth control? You sound like an eight-year-old prick. Um, um, no. um, you're an eight-year-old prick probably with no father, right? There's no father over there? No, shut up. You're a nigger. You know what uh, I mean? I struck a nerve with this stupid little brat, huh? <laughs> I struck a nerve with this brat, huh? No father, huh, boy? Oh, young up, oh. Oh, come on, I want to talk to you. What happened? <laughs> he didn't like that, huh? The little boy didn't like the fact that I was yanking him right out of the goddamn closet telling him you ain't got no goddamn daddy. And listen to him, he got mad. You mad, boy? You mad? Uh, I mean, you shouldn't be mad at me. You should be mad at that dirty, dishrag whore of a mother that shitted you out of her uterus hole. All right, that's who you should be mad at, little boy. You should be going out there saying, hey, Mom. Uh, what happened to Dad, huh? And, and I want you to really ask her. Don't tell her not to give you these evasive answers like, "Oh, well, it just didn't work out, and we had two different people." And ain't she, 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 she. shut up. You should tell her why exactly y'all are not together. All right. And she, and and you know, truth be told, uh, old Ma over here wanted to become a cougar and thought that. Um, I don't need a man to raise my son. I can raise my son all by myself. And as a result, this is what we got out here. This is what we got. Jesus Christ. Anyway, let, let's continue going out here. 818, what's up? Hey, right, taking too long. 513, what's going on? 
Yo, what up, guys? How's it going? Hey, uh, I just want to get off topic here for a second. I don't really give a shit about John Edwards. I just wanted to talk about a little experience I had with the Occupy Wall Street douchebags about a week ago. Go ahead. Hey, I was uh, coming home last weekend from the bars early in the morning, and those bastards are out there camping out in their tents. And we got a fountain down in Cincinnati, and I'm up sitting there at the stoplight, and this guy has the audacity to drop his damn drawers and take his shit in a public fountain. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? You actually saw the what, like about 2 or 3 in the morning? No, it was just disgusting. Oh, my God. I rolled my window down. I mean, do you understand, folks? I mean, you're hearing it from people in other cities. This is a vagabond bum revolution, and we shouldn't have to take it any longer. And I'm telling you, these Occupy Wall Street pricks are lucky that us capitalists have things to do. We have responsibilities. We've got jobs. Because if we had as much time as they had on their little stupid, dumb, vagabond revolution, we would all personally come down there and evict these pricks one stupid bum at a time. All right? I guarantee you right now. Anyway, let's see. Who else do we got going on over here? We got 917. What's up? Not taking too long, you milky liquor. Uh, we got 224. What's going on? Um, I'd like to play a song for Herman Nigger Kane. You stupid asshole. Uh, how about 818? What's going on? Shut up. 818-300. You want me to say your number so, you know, maybe, you know, you can get some people that actually talk to you? <laughs> Here, let's call this asshole back, see if we can get his mother on the on the horn here. Call his ass back. I mean, you know, if you're going to call me up, why don't you say something worth a crap? Stop wasting our time, all right, assholes? Jesus Christ, call his ass back, engineer. Okay. Call his ass back. I'm sorry, but the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Well, why don't you set it up then, you stupid loser? I mean, these idiots are paying on voicemails that they ain't even using. That's how stupid these people are. Jesus Christ. Anyway, uh, I'm telling you, I mean, my patience is wearing thin with you assholes, all right? I mean, do you understand how much money I made in today's markets, for Christ's sake? I shouldn't even have to be here! Anyway, let me move on to another subject matter. Something that's going to get me in a little bit better mood, and I'm talking about my man, Herman Sugarcane, baby. <laughs> Herman Sugarcane continues his dominance over the GOP candidates that want the nomination for president for the GOP out here. Once again, that's my man, Herman Cain, baby. Let me tell you something right now. His meteoric rise to the top, it ain't going nowhere. He's going to be the candidate for president, and I guarantee you right now, these idiots on the left, these goddamn liberals are no longer going to be able to sit here and play the race card any longer as it relates to these ridiculous political ideas out here. Because let's be honest. I mean, what are they going to do now? They, they can't do the same thing they did in 2008. They can't say, oh, you're a racist if you don't like Obama. Oh, you don't like Obamacare? You're a racist. Oh, you don't like that? You're a racist. Can't say that anymore there, liberals. Huh? Can't say that anymore. And, and by the way, um, uh, Barack Obama is not our first black president. All right, Let, Let's get that straight. All right, He is not our first black president. He's our first mulatto. He's our first half-white, half-black president, all right? Herman Sugar Cane is going to be our first black president, baby. Woo! You know it and I know it. That's who's going to be our first black president. Herman Sugar Cane, 100% black, baby. Straight from Georgia. Straight from the South, baby. I mean, and Herman Cain grew up during a time when it was racially insensitive out here. And yet this man still persevered. He still became a businessman. He still became a CEO, so on and so forth. All right? So if this man can do some things in the midst of times where it was racially uh, you know, racially hot, if you will, 
then there should be no goddamn reason for you people in this day and age to do the same damn thing. I mean, why do you think that Herman Cain always says, as it pertains to this Occupy Wall Street protest, that if you're going to sit here and piss and moan about how you're not rich, if you're going to piss and moan about how you don't got no job, don't blame Wall Street, don't blame the big banks, blame your goddamn self, all right? <laughs> blame your goddamn self, baby. And I'm going to tell you something, that's my man right there, Herman Sugar Cane. And let me tell you, if you happen to have any capital on hand, if you have any money, $1, $5, $10, $100, make sure to donate it to the Herman Sugar Cane campaign, baby. All right? They need all the money they can get because, remember, Barack Obama is going to raise $1 billion with a B, $1 billion for his 2012 campaign. Why is he going to raise that much? Because he thinks he can buy his way into the White House for a second term. You know it and I know it. And Herman Cain ain't going to raise that much money, all right? And he's running his campaign like a business, all right? So like I said, support Herman Cain for true change, baby, all right? Make sure to donate to his campaign. And if you do donate to his campaign, make sure to tell him that ghost sent you. Make sure to tell them that ghost sent you, because let me tell you, if we get enough people donating to the Herman Cain campaign, Mr. Herman Cain himself will be here, and he'll do an interview. I guarantee it, all right? I guarantee it, baby. Let me tell you something. That's my man. That's my man, Herman Sugar Cain. And uh, speaking of uh, the other GOP candidates, uh, you know, I was a little excited at first when we uh, first heard about uh, Rick Perry, the governor of Texas, running for president. Uh, then he went out and debated and basically put his foot in his goddamn mouth and, uh, you know, basically showed his true goddamn colors out here. Well, anyway, Rick Perry you know, basically said in an interview today, or yesterday, I think it was yesterday, that it was a mistake for him to go in and conduct himself in the debates. A mistake. A mistake? What are you, what are you talking about, a mistake? You've got to debate, all right? I mean, you've got to show that you can think on your feet, all right? What do you mean it's a mistake that you went out for these debates? What are you talking about? It's a mistake. Are you kidding me? You're supposed to go out there and do some crap. You're supposed to go out there and be presidential. I mean, Jesus Christ. Anyway, I want to hear from you. What do you think about my man, Herman Sugar Cane, baby? What do you think about him? Are you going to vote for him? Uh, you're going to go out there and donate to the campaign, Herman Cain campaign, baby? What are you, you going to do? I want to hear what you have to say about this man. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. All right, don't be a milky licker. Call me up right goddamn now. Tell me what you think about him, all right? And don't be these that damn idiot trolls that are just going to sit there and say these sentence fragments and then just be like, ha, 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 I mean, why don't you say something with some goddamn substance, all right? Six four six six five two four eight six nine is the number to call. Area code six uh, seven six three. What's up? You're on the horn. Hey, what's up, Ghost? Uh, about Herman Cain, I think he would be a pretty good president. I don't agree with everything he says, but for the most part, he seems like a pretty. He knows what he's doing. You're damn right. He knows what he's doing. Are you kidding me? I mean, he knows what he's doing, and and he's kicking ass and taking names out here. That's what he's doing. He's not out there to. He's not afraid to say whatever's on his mind. All right? I mean, haven't you noticed that every time Herman Cain is speaking, there's never a goddamn teleprompter in front of his face? Haven't you noticed that every time Herman Cain's speaking, there's not a goddamn piece of paper for him reading off of I mean, it's directly from the heart, baby. That's what I like about Herman Cain. All right? That's what I like. I mean, and I hope that you like it, too, because let me tell you something right now. We don't need any more teleprompter presidents. Anyway, area code 214, what's up? Oh, goddamn stupid vibrator again. Area code 518, what's going on? Oh, Jesus Christ. 717, what's up? Hey, Ghost. Kane's got my vote. I mean, with his 999 plan, it's sure affording the communist movement. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Oh, I mean, with the 999 plan helping the working class, I mean, us communists can finally take down these capitalist dogs. That doesn't make any kind of sense, you stupid moron. I mean, oh, I, I yes mean it explain. Does. No, oh, no, 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 just shut your stupid mouth and explain. Stop sputtering out sentence fragments of crap you don't know and say what the hell you mean, you stupid mumbling, stumbling jerk. Okay, let me.
let me put it to you, you little capitalist milky lickers. See, the 9 plan will help us because if you flip 999, it's 666, which represents the capitalist milky lickers. And that will help us. Get this stupid idiot off, for Christ's sake. I mean, no shit. Everybody want this idiot's number, for Christ's sake? Does everybody want this? It's 717-781. Should I continue there, 717? Damn right, son. Okay, 3391. <laughs> Three three nine one. All right, there you go. He he said that he wanted it out, so go ahead. Area code three one eight. What's up? Yeah, what's up? How you doing? Uh, been doing some Ryu on some trolls, man. Are you kidding me? I've been doing some major Ryu on some trolls for Christ's sake, man. I mean, I'm. I'm are you kid? Are you kid? You know what I mean? Tiger uppercut. Tiger uppercut. They don't want none of me, for Christ's sake, all right? I mean, let me tell you something right now. I got balls the size of grapefruits that'll slap them upside their chin back into reality, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. 720, what's up? Uh, and I was the only person she'd go to, to, like... If you want more help, just ask. Yeah, I will. I will. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not hating you. I'm more annoyed at him. Okay. And I'm more annoyed at Curb for, for trying... Look, here's what I have with Curb. I basically told her, look, if he bitches about me again... I think to a certain extent he's arrogant. Oh shit! Yeah. Uh, I still on the fucking show. Uh, he, uh... <laughs> he realized that his goddamn conversation was being listened to. Huh? <laughs> this is what's happening in trolls' houses all across America. Did y'all hear that? There's about four or five idiots having a circle jerk right there, talking amongst each other. Haven't you noticed that every male that calls up? There's no female in the background anywhere. Haven't you noticed that? Stupid losers. Jesus Christ. Who the hell else do we got? Uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, 347, what's up? This is for Christine. I still recall the wondrous moment when you first appeared before my eyes, just like a fleeting apparition, just like a pure beauty distillation. Whenever I languished in the throes of hopeless grief, amid the troubles of life's vanity, your dear voice lingered on in me. Your sweet face came to me in dreams. Thank you. That was horrible. I mean, seriously, come on. I mean, you know who you sound like? You sound like uh, Kevin Smith trying to write clerks. You know, that's what you sound like. You sound like, you know, trying too hard to try to bundle up big words together in an attempt to, you know, try to rip off a Quentin Tarantino-esque script for Christ. That's what, that's what, you're, that's what you sound like to me. All right? I mean, I'm sick and tired of these disgusting wannabe poets out here that think that they're so great because they can bundle up a bunch of non-pantameter-based words together and say, oh, yeah, look at me, I'm a poet. I'm a poet. Shove it up your ass, all right? Give me a freaking break. Who the hell else do we got over here? Uh, we got 318. What's up? Yeah, maybe oh, just, just shut up. Just sit there and shut up. You're too late. 435. What's up? Brace this Jewish Canadian brandy that likes to take it up the butthole. And that's it? You waited an hour for that? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, you did. You waited an hour for that. You know what I mean? I mean, come on. Rip off a joke from jokes.com or something, man. Jesus Christ. Stupid morons. Anyway, we're supposed to be talking about my man, Herman Cain, and his dominance of the GOP, while Rick Perry says it was a mistake to actually go into the debates out here, and moreover... He's not committing for any more future debates. Yeah, that, that's going to win you the presidency there, Rick Perry, you stupid Aggie. Anyway, uh, let's move on to another subject matter. I want to talk a little bit about Turkey. That's right. Uh, you know, we've been talking about a lot about Turkey as of late. Well, according to reports, Turkey is actually allowing uh, Syrian army defectors to go across into its border and actually plan attacks against Bashar al-Assad and his army. I mean, let me tell you something. Uh, Turkey is trying to put his fingers in a lot of pies out here, but at least Turkey is doing right on one thing. I have to agree that Turkey should allow Syrian army defectors to go into their borders to plan attacks on Bashar al-Assad's army. I mean, it's about enough 
of people getting killed out there in Syria. It's enough. All right? Over 3,000 dead because Bashar al-Assad does not want to relinquish his goddamn totalitarian power. And you got these Occupy Wall Street bastards pissing and moaning because some schmuck got hit in the head with a goddamn tear gas canister. You stupid, ungrateful bricks. There are people dying in Syria protesting right now, and you people are bitching. I mean, just count how many thousands died in the 2009 Iran uprising that were killed by the Ayatollah, that were killed by Ahmadinejad, for Christ's sake, for protesting. And you stupid Occupy Wall Street jerks are sitting here pissing and moaning because some idiot got hit in the head with a goddamn gas canister. He shouldn't have been there. He shouldn't have been there. Anyway, once again, Turkey is allowing Syrian army defectors to come into their border and attack Syria and Bashar al-Assad's army. And I'm saying, hey, that's the way it should be, baby. That's the way it should be. Anyway, let's take a couple of calls, see if anybody has anything to say about Turkey. 779, what's up? Oh, hey, Gus. How you doing today? How's it going? Um, I just wanted to let you know that the Ku Klux Klan meeting has been switched to... Ah, shut up. All right. 781, what's going on? Hey, Gus. Um, How's it going? Again, I'm not here to troll this time, though. Sorry about before. That was immature of me. Go ahead. Um, I'm not very sure. I just pulled up an article on the Turkey Syria thing. I don't know much about that. But I'm not going to read it because he took my call a little early. But um, I came across something recently. It was posted back in May 16th. I'm not sure if you heard of it. But a U.S. military uh, fighter, of course, was uh, on a mountain, it looks like, and he took a just completely defenseless puppy and just threw it off a cliff. And uh, you know, who cares? All right. I mean, I, I, I can't believe people gave that soldier that much crap because he threw a freaking puppy over a freaking cliff. Who cares? All right. Who cares? I mean, I really don't give a crap. I mean, you know, the guy's out there at war, for Christ's sake. He's out there killing people, and, you know, he's in the midst of that battlefield type of mentality. He sees a stupid dog, he gets it, and he throws it off a cliff. Who gives a crap, all right? Jesus Christ. You see, you people care more about stupid animals than you do goddamn people, all right? Who gives a crap, all right? We got an overpopulation of dogs and cats anyway, all right? I mean, you people are like, oh, you're heartless. You're heartless. Why don't you count how many thousands of dogs and cats are put to sleep uh, in kennels and in pounds all across America? Why don't you take a look at that number before you sit over here and say, Ah, you're so heartless. How can you do it? Shut up, all right? I don't care about a stupid dog. Give me a freaking break, all right? Get a life, all right? a stupid animal. I mean, the next time that you have a cheeseburger, the next time that you have a goddamn T-bone steak, just to think that was a living animal too, but it had to be killed so that your ass can eat. So don't give me this crap. Jesus Christ. 413, what's up? You're on the horn. What's up, Ghost? How's it going? But, um, I'm pretty, I'm definitely going to vote for Herman Cain. Um, I don't believe, uh, agree with everything he says, uh, there was this one thing where he was saying like how he believes that homosexuality is not a choice, which I don't even think is relevant to no, anything. I, I think he said that it was a choice. I, I think that he's trying no, to say a that choice. it is. No, it was a choice. That's what I meant, actually. Yeah. yeah. So uh, no, are, you of, are you of the persuasion that uh, you're born that way? Uh, I think it is born that way. I mean, I have gay friends. I don't know. I think. Well, it, well, no. I mean, let's talk about this for a second. I mean, I honestly believe that there are people that are genuinely born, uh, you know, mixed with uh, you know estrogen and testosterone, and the estrogen levels in males that are born with this type of condition are are pumping that much more than the testosterone. Now, yeah, I can believe you when when you say that there are some homosexuals that are actually born. Uh, you know, a little fruity or, or a little feminized, I should say. But what I, I don't, don't agree that's... with, what I don't agree with, though, is the fact that you have the gay agenda that has basically anesthetized the American populace with this whole homosexual idea, 
that now, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but it's like a rite of passage for teenage girls to have slumber parties and muff dive on each other while they're 16, 17 years old, for Christ's sake. I mean, from what I've read, it's a rite of passage now for boys to play with each other's wee-wees whenever they're kicking back and, you know, can't find a girl to give them a decent hump nowadays. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And in my personal opinion, a lot of this homosexual contingent, as far as I'm concerned, is not only by choice, but it's by acceptance. I mean, a lot of the people that are uh, basically going out and... uh, Uh, intermingling themselves with the homosexual community are those that have been rejected by every social circle out there. I mean, you know, I'm I'm serious. Everybody at this point in time that, you know, is participating in the mainstream homosexual community are basically individuals that have been rejected by every social circle out there. And as a result, the only people that will accept them as they are is the homosexual community And in my personal opinion, I think that the homosexual community has been tainted because they have so many of these life losers, uh, these disgusting human beings that aren't, quote-unquote, naturally born gay, that are just turning gay just so that they can hang out with a social circle, all right? I mean, that's my personal opinion out here. I'll agree with you. I feel that there are some people that are naturally, you know, pumping more estrogen in their bodies, uh, you know, they've got more of the what is it, at Y chromosome or whatever the hell it is pumping through their bodies. I, I, I believe that. But it is a small minority. The numbers do not fit with how many homosexuals are claiming to be homosexual in today's society. I think that the homosexual community has been tainted by losers of America. All right? I mean, do you remember in the 90s when homosexuals were coming out out here and the typical cliche homosexual was somebody who dressed well, who was articulate, you know, who had the best... You know, I mean, do y- y'all remember that whole cliche? Do y'all remember that crap? You notice how that cliche has gone completely out the window in the 2000s? And the reason is, is because all these losers that have been rejected by every goddamn social circle have basically succumbed to the fact that the only social circle that's going to accept them for being the no-personality jerk-dick losers that they are is the homosexual community. All right? I mean, that's all there is to it. And as far as I'm concerned, the homosexual community should be upset at how many people that are claiming to be homosexual, you know? I mean, I'm serious. I mean, they should be pissed off out here. I mean, there should be no reason why all these people are homosexual, but the only reason they are is because the homosexual community is open. Oh, we accept everybody. It doesn't matter. I mean, we accept all people. And this is why you have such a big homosexual contingent. I mean, that's all there is to it, all right? So, I mean, when Herman Cain says that it's a choice, that's what he means. I mean, of course, we have those incidents where, you know, somewhere in the womb, I guess mom, you know, didn't eat the right foods or, uh, I, I don't know, drank while she was pregnant or whatever the case might be, where males are actually having more estrogen pumped through their body. But that right there, my friend, is a small minority, all right? This is not something that it comprises most of the gay community. The majority of the gay community are just a bunch of losers that have been rejected by every social circle, and now the only social circle that will accept them is the homosexuals, all right? Anyway, we were talking a little bit about how Turkey is allowing attacks on Syria from uh, defectors of Bashar al-Assad's army within their borders. But we're running out of time, so let me go ahead and get through the other subject matters. Uh, Did y'all remember a couple of days ago me saying that uh, the Somali president is pissing and moaning because Kenya decided to deploy troops within the borders of Somalia to go after this terrorist organization called Al-Sayab, Al-Salab, or what the hell's it got? Al, what the hell's his name? Al-Shabaab. Al-Shabaab is the name, all right? Well... I know there was a lot of people that were giving me crap because I was telling the Somali president to stop pissing and moaning and allow the Kenyans to go out there and do the job that they can't do, all right? Well, now the leaders of Shabab, Al-Shabab, want to actually talk to the leaders of Kenya to negotiate. Yeah, that's right. Al-Shabaab is running scared within the borders of Somalia. Now they're contacting the goddamn government of Kenya to negotiate some kind of a deal so that the Kenyan military can leave them alone. Huh? How do you like that, 
Somali president? And the reason that I bring up the Somali president because he was pissed about it. He was pissed. He was like, oh, it's not fair. Kenya coming into my country. It's not fair. Oh, yeah, well, look at him now. Kenya's doing the job that you couldn't do there, Somalia. And now al Sabab, the terrorist organization within the damn borders of Somalia, are trying to contact Kenya so that they could stop the incursion. All right, so bravo to Kenya, man. All right, bravo. Go out there and kick the crap out of these Islamic extremists, for Christ's sake. I mean, look at them. They're running scared. They're running scared, for Christ's sake, man. Al-Shabaab is trying to contact the leaders of Kenya to try to negotiate, broker some kind of deal of sorts. Unfreaking real. That's why I brought that particular story up to uh, up to the subject matter of everybody on the broadcast, because the bottom line is is that we need people like Kenya. You know, we, we need countries like Kenya that are going to pursue these disgusting, despicable Islamic extremists. Uh, you know that are that are just doing nothing but causing havoc for the sake of causing havoc. We need to pursue and kill these bastards. And not to mention, it's good to know that Kenya's got a decent military and uh, not just producing a bunch of uh, long distance runners. For Christ's sake, you know what I mean? I mean, let me tell you something right now. You, you you go to any run that is like one mile plus. I guarantee you, you're going to find a Kenyan winning that race. All right. <laughs> I mean, you go to any of these marathons, you go to any of these, I mean, Kenyans are winning the race. You want to know why? All right? Because they got to do running for traveling. You know, that's how they travel to villages, for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? There ain't no goddamn cars in Kenya. They're out there running. You know, they run long distances. You know? They're in Africa. Got another way, got away, got away. Africa. That's where they're from, man. Anyway, I want to hear from you. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. What do you think about Kenya? Huh? Kicking some ass out here. Al-Shabaab is running scared. Area code 339, what's up? You're on the horn. Well, I I will be honest. It's pretty badass what Kenya's doing. I have to say that. But there's... You're damn right it's pretty awesome what they're doing. Are you kidding me? They're out there pursuing the enemy. Somali over here is just sitting on its thumb. Not knowing what the hell to do out here, Kenya's like, this is Africa. Got out of the way, out of the way, out of the way. I mean, and they sent a couple of Zulu warriors in there to kick the living crap out of uh, Al Shabaab. I mean, much props, Kenya. Seriously, much props. Uh, who else you got? Uh, yeah, 631, you're on the horn. What's up, Ghost? How's it going? Not too bad. I'm sitting in my college dorm room listening to your uh, broadcast. i got to say, good show. Keep it up. I appreciate it. Well, anyway, on Kenya, um, I'm glad someone's doing the job. I mean, you got these fucking Somalians running all around here trying to pirate shit. They got the Al-Qaeda over there. They got everyone down there. At least Kenya's trying to fucking stick up for themselves, you know? You're goddamn right. You're damn right. And the reason they're sticking up for themselves is because uh, they have safe haven in Somalia, and they're actually taking pop shots at Kenyan interests from Somalia. And they've been trying to broker negotiations with the Somali government, but the Somali government doesn't even have enough uh, uh, authority to control itself. So Kenya took it upon itself to just go in and incur into the country of Somalia to pursue these goddamn al sabab assholes. And you're goddamn right. I'm really glad that Kenya's finally going out there kicking ass and taking names out there. Much props to Kenya, all right? Much props. And, and thanks for uh, tuning in with me there, 631, in the uh, college dorm room there, all right? Make sure to have a pretty good uh, Halloween. I don't know if you're going to you know, be with the parents or be in the neighborhood or be in the dorms for Halloween, but goddamn it, if you're in the dorms, I mean, hell, you're already going to put yourself in about $80,000 in college debt anyway. You better make sure to have yourself a bitchin' Halloween party with beer bongs and other alcoholic beverage intoxicants. You understand what I'm saying, 631? Yeah, I hear you, but not not this Halloween, man. I got a Ronald Reagan paper due for my history class. Got to work on that. Oh, well, hey, that that's even more important, man. That's pretty good. Anyway, thanks a lot, 631. Good luck on your uh, Ronald Reagan paper, and keep on trucking, man. I thank, thank you for calling. Uh, area code 617, what's up? I'm taking too long, idiot. 818. Taking too long, you moron. 917. 
Yeah. Hey, girls, um, can we go back to um, Herman King 999 play? Because there's ahead. like two. Go ahead. Um, um, I've been meaning to ask, such as um, if he puts heavy sales tax on cities that have he- heavy sales tax already, like where I'm living. There's like 11% sales tax. That will give us 20% sales tax. What will be the incentive for us to spend? And uh, that's my first question. All right. Well, first of all, you know, let me just get to your first question first, all right? Uh, if there is a high sales tax as it relates to your state sales tax, well, then you and everybody else in your state should uh, rally to lower that state income tax or state sales tax, excuse me. I mean, you know, because the bottom line is is that uh, the only reason that states should have sales tax is to suffice any kind of state funding that's necessary. And if you're going to have 11 cents sales tax, and yet your government, uh, your state government is still not, uh, you know, giving the amount of funds necessary to your municipality to pave the roads, to, you know, to, to help with infrastructure type uh, situations, to uh, help with city public services, so on and so forth. Well, then maybe, you know, this should be the time for individuals like yourself to rally your state, your city, to lower that goddamn sales tax. And if they're not going to lower it, you need to itemize what the hell they're spending that crap on, all right? Now, secondly, even if they do not lower the state income tax and you still got 11%, and under Kane's 999 program you get an extra 9% sales tax on top of the state sales tax, you have to remember this that you're going to have more of your money at the end of the year if you happen to be an earner. I mean, you're going to have more of your money because 9% flat sales, uh, excuse me, 9% flat income tax is going to leave you with a lot more capital. I mean, you have to think that when you sell a stock for a profit, like, you know, you know, if you play the stock market in your own personal name, not as a corporation, not as a company, but if you sell your own stock out of your own name, well, you have to pay 40% in capital gains tax just on that one transaction. And you have to itemize that with a whole bunch of other profits that you made on a whole bunch of other different investments each and every time. All right? And then you've got to compound that with any other tax incentives and tax initiatives in the 42,000-page tax code uh, so that you can somehow maneuver that 40% that you're paying in capital gains tax and lower it to about 25% in capital gains tax, all right? Now, I know that sounds really confusing, but that's the point. That's what Herman Cain's trying to say. The whole goddamn tax code is ridiculous. I mean, all it's doing is uh, uh, allowing a $46 billion a year business for idiots to file the taxes for you. I mean, there's a $46 billion a year business for accountants and tax lawyers and all this other nonsense, for Christ's sake, just so that you can file your own taxes, all right? And on top of which, folks, if if you're somebody that doesn't have kids, if you're somebody who's an earner that doesn't have any children, doesn't have any dependents, you're still going to have to pay about 35% of what you earn each year to the government. Yeah, I'm not joking. So, you know, even if you're somebody who is an earner out here who doesn't have any children, who doesn't, you know, have any dependents, You're going to still pay 35% on your income that you get from your job on top of the 40% that you pay on any capital gains that you make on any outside investments. So my point is, is if you take away all that hoopla, if you take away the 40% capital gains, you take away the 35% uh, taxes on, on single people, you take away all this stuff, more people are going to have more money in their pockets So it'll offset any potential national sales tax that will be incurred on the retail end. Now, one more thing to add is that used products and used goods will not be taxed the 9% national sales tax. All right? They will not be taxed the 9% sales tax. So, you know, if you happen to go to some goddamn thrift store or a second-hand store or something of that that nature, you ain't going to pay the 9% sales tax. So, you know, one one more time, you're going to have more money in your pocket under the 999 plan than you would actually making money on your own and having to pay 40% on capital 40% on capital gains, 35% of personal income tax, so on and so forth. Do you understand what I'm trying to get at here 917? Yeah, yeah. 
But like my second question is that um, if they tax everything, so. Hold on, you're not coming in. You got you got a little bit of a problem. Are you there? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Can All right, you go, go ahead. We, we we you kind of had some kind of interference or something. Go ahead. What's your second question? Um, so if they tax all of these um food and all of this stuff, not not enough income, of course. Wouldn't that give like the people more incentives to depend on government? Well, well, uh, you keep cutting in and out, but I think that your question is is that if people pay 9% sales tax on everything, wouldn't it be more plausible for people to be on government assistance? No, I don't. I don't think so. Because people are going to have more money in their pockets. Not only are people going to pay a flat 9% tax on their personal income tax, but corporations also. Corporations are going to pay a flat 9% income tax. I mean, so, uh, you know, in my personal opinion, uh, companies are going to have more money to invest into more jobs. They're going to have more money to invest into more capital goods. They're going to have more money to invest in expansion because the 9% flat tax basically allows corporations to, uh, you know, be taxed on whatever they profit, whether it's capital gains, whether it's uh, retail sales, uh, whether it's day trading, whatever the case might be, it's a flat 9% on the corporate end. Moreover, when they pay their employees, it's a flat 9% for their employees. I mean, you don't understand. I mean, the reason, young man, you don't understand what I'm getting at is because you don't pay taxes. Once you start making a little money and paying taxes, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. All right? I mean, because the bottom line is, is that if you're a single man or a single woman and you're making somewhere between $65,000 a year, you know, you're only going to take home thirty five or thirty six thousand a year. Can you believe that? Yeah, I'm not joking. If you're a single man or a single woman making sixty five thousand dollars a year, you're only going to take home about thirty six, maybe thirty seven thousand dollars that year. Can you believe that crap? The rest of it going right to the goddamn government. But under uh, McCain's, or excuse me, McCain, under uh, Herman Cain's plan, yeah, screw John McCain. Under Herman Cain's plan. Flat 9%. So you take 9% out of 65000 that year, and that's what you're taking home. And that's all there is to it. Anyway, we're already, Jesus Christ, six minutes into the third and final hour of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Uh, before we get into anything else, I'd like for everybody to please... Retweet the broadcast, all right? Go to the social networks, go to the forums, go to the blogs, and spread it around like wildfire. And let everybody know that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, for Christ's sake. We got all kinds of little buttons underneath the player right there, all right? Why don't you help us out and press that little Facebook like button and press that little retweet this button and share this button and Google Plus button? It's just a freaking Click, for Christ's sake. Anyway, uh, before we get into anything else, I hate to even ask. Um, engineer, do we have any goddamn Twitter shout-outs to be given out out here? Well, according to the engineer, we got a few shout-outs to be given out. And if you want a shout-out, all you have to do is uh, send me a tweet right now at Ghost Politics on Twitter. And make sure to use the hashtag ghost money. That's right. Use the hashtag ghost money and you tweet at me. I'm going to give you a shout out right here, right now, live on the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. All right? So let's go ahead and see if we got any goddamn tweets from anybody right now. All right. Who do we got here? We've got uh, Gobble Wobble. Uh, we've got Silver Streak in the house. Uh, I shake. Turks? Ah, oh, you son of a bitch. I mean, enough of these soulless goddamn Twitter names, man. Jesus Christ. Uh, who the hell else do we got out here? We got Sir Amitav. What's up? Who else we got? Who else do we got, engineer? All right, we got uh, somebody named Japanese Mutants. I mean, that's wrong in so many ways, you assholes. Come on. Come on! Uh, we got Wheel Gator. 
Uh, we got Darian Cutler. What's going on, man? We got Rebel T-Bone in the house. Uh, we got... I'm not going to say that, you sick son of a bitch. Uh, we got I Am The Moon Star. Uh, we got Ward 24 again. What's going on, man? Uh, we got Trixie and Fuego. What the hell is... I mean, what the hell is up that, man? Trixie and, Fe- and Fuego? Jesus Christ. Who the hell else do we got going on over here, Engineer? Uh, we got Exara Hawks up in the house. What's going on? The Piano Man. We got Jake Schuler in the place. We got SP Lee 360. We got Antoinette Vick in the place. What's going on? Uh, we've got, uh, oh, my God, Drew Peacock. Drew Peacock. Jesus Christ, you sick son of a bitch. Uh, who else we got? We got Cosmo CB in the place. We got Screwdriver in the house. Who the hell else do we got here? We got Capitalist Brad up in the place. What's going on? Uh, we got Anonymous Plumo once again. Well, how you doing, man? Uh, we've got uh, Plopper McFagelin. Okay. Uh, we've got uh, Tay Rock. Uh, we've got uh, this sick son of a bitch is out here. All right, enough of the Texas jokes, all right? Oh, hot deals in Texas, sir. Texas and Fuego. Can you shove those goddamn Twitter names up your ass, please? All right, seriously, we, we don't want to hear that crap. I don't want to hear that crap. Jesus Christ. Who the hell else do we got, for Christ's sake? I'm going to stop doing this if you idiots keep on, keep up with this crap. I'm telling you this right goddamn now, boy. We got Capitalist Jew in the place. Uh, we got uh, Ghost B. Madoff. Oh, you assholes. All right. Don't compare me to a Bernie Madoff asshole. Bernie Madoff was a was a pyramid scheme fraud. All right, me I'm the prognosticators of prognosticators, baby. You understand that? I'm not out here, con- you know, conducting pyramid schemes. I am the man, baby. You understand? The prognosticator of prognosticators. And not only that, I'm sick and tired of these people that uh, supposedly lost money with Bernie Madoff. I'm sick and tired of them being on the news saying, I lost my life savings because I gave it to Bernie Madoff. And now they're getting paid back. Can you believe this crap? You're talking about bailouts. These assholes that lost their money to Bernie Madoff are actually getting paid back. Hey, I mean, it's tough titty. I mean, what kind of a moron are you to give all your money to some idiot and tell them, um, can you make more money, please? Can 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 you can you can you make me more money? I mean, that's the most stupidest crap of all time. And anybody who lost money to Bernie Madoff, you deserved it. All right, you deserved it. Anyway, Jesus Christ, we're we're, we're running out of time. I'm not going to do any more Twitter shoutouts. We were talking about how leaders of Al Shabaab are trying to contact the government of Kenya to negotiate, you know, some kind of brokered peace agreement or something because they're running scared. Well, let me go ahead and uh, get to the other uh, parts of the program here. Uh, since the president has announced the end of military operations in Iraq and uh, bringing all the troops home by this summer, we have had an upsurge of violence out there in Iraq. I mean, you know, like the generals didn't say this was going to happen, Mr. Obama. huh? Like the generals didn't say this was going to happen. Anyway, we had a, a car bombing a couple of days ago that killed about 30 people. Today we have another car bombing killing about 18 people, wounding 36 people in Baghdad, Iraq. And let me tell you, the, uh, you know, we're going to continue to see this type of disgusting powder keg riffraff because they know that America is cutting and running. And I can't believe that America is okay with this. You know, I mean, w- w- how many troops did we lose in the Iraq War, how many casualties did we incur in the Iraq War? How many trillions of dollars did we spend in the Iraq War? And then what, oh, Barack Obama wants a pat on the back because he's cutting and running? You're not getting a pat on the back from me, sir. You know what I'm saying? You're getting, you're getting a goddamn apologist. Goddamn good! <laughs> running, man. I mean, who's going to pay for the two trillion dollars? Who's going to pay for the two trillion dollars in turn of literate these goddamn Iraqis? Who's going to pay for it? I mean, does anybody ever think of that for Christ's sake? I mean, Jesus Christ, give me a goddamn 
goddamn mic. Give me the mic. Give me the goddamn mic. I mean, don't you understand how many lives we've lost? How many casualties have been incurred, for Christ's sake? I mean, we've spent over two trillion with a T trillion dollars because of this goddamn war, for Christ's sake. And Barack Obama is cutting and running. I mean, who's going to pay for the $2 trillion? We are. I mean, don't you idiots understand that in World War II that England paid us back here about, you know, earlier in the decade? They just barely paid us back for World War II. Don't you understand that any time America goes in and helps anybody as it relates to military combat situations, that we get paid back? All right? I mean, and, 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 and the, the sad part about it is Iraq has a surplus. I mean, they're selling oil on the world market, making billions. They have no debt. Unlike us, we have, what is it, $14 trillion in debt? They've got no debt. And $2 trillion of that $14 trillion came from liberating these people in Iraq. All right? What I don't understand is why the American people and or the American government aren't demanding that this makeshift Iraqi parliament start paying back America with interest for liberating their sorry asses. I mean, seriously. I mean, if they ain't going to pay us, if they're not going to give us capital, then by God, they need to give us oil pro bono. You know, you want to talk about artificially bringing down the cost of gasoline and cost of petroleum? Why don't we force this Iraqi parliament to give us oil pro bono, and we'll go ahead and knock, them off, knock it off their tab. We'll knock it off their tab until they pay back the goddamn $2 trillion that we spent liberating these pieces of crap. I mean, do you understand how OPEC would feel if Iraq actually gave us oil pro bono, for Christ's sake? I mean, we would lower the cost of gasoline, uh, I mean, down to like a dollar a gallon. You understand that? I mean, Iraq is the second largest oil deposit in the world. And why we haven't forced this disgusting, despicable Iraqi parliament to give us oil pro bono is beyond me. But look. These idiots in America are going to sit here and say, Yay, Barack Obama ended the Iraq war. It's great. Oh, he's Mr. Peacetime President. He's the Nobel Peace Prize winner. Are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? This is a man who's expanded the war in Afghanistan. This is a man who's expanded uh, the war in Waziristan, which is the border between uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. This guy's committing drone attacks in Pakistan. This guy is aiding and abetting the rebels in Libya, which have links with Al Qaeda. I mean, I, I can go on and on, man. I mean, you know, th this president has done the complete opposite of what the hell he said he was going to do in 2008. Did the utter complete opposite. And yet these idiots in America are like, um, no, I think Barack Obama's doing a great job. Even though I'm out here in Occupy Wall Street bitching and moaning like some stupid and potent jerk, um, I think Barack Obama's great. Jesus Christ. Let's move on, for Christ's sake. And speaking of Libya, believe it or not, uh, I guess the Libyan rebels have heard uh, yours truly's broadcast because uh, I find it rather disgusting that uh, the Libyan rebels want to be recognized by the international community and yet – did not allow Muammar Gaddafi to be put on trial on the International Criminal Court. Uh, now, uh, since they heard me say that uh, how can anybody take them serious if they're not going to oblige the Geneva Conventions, if they're not going to oblige these international agreements, well, it looks like uh, they've been listening because now Libyan rebels want to bring the killer of Muammar Gaddafi to justice. That's right. They're going to try to find out who in the hell killed Muammar Gaddafi, and they're going to bring him to justice. Because let's be honest, all right? I mean, let's just be completely honest. I mean, if you want to be a legitimate nation state, if you want to be recognized by the international community, you can't be conducting yourself like the way they conducted themselves when executing Gaddafi. I mean, that was a complete and utter disgusting primitive way at executing this son of a bitch, all right? 
I mean, they shoved an AK-47 in his ass and then pulled the trigger. That's what they did. All right? I'm not joking. That's exactly what they did. When he should have been brought to the International Criminal Court and he should have uh, stood trial, you know? He should have stood trial. I mean, if these goddamn Libyan rebels want to be recognized by the international community, they need to stop acting like a bunch of ridiculous barbarians and come back into civilized society out here. Anyway, once again, Libyan rebels want to bring the killer of Muammar Gaddafi to justice, and I think it's because they probably heard yours truly uh, basically call them out for the barbarians that they are, going out there and not allowing Muammar Gaddafi to stand trial in the International Criminal Court and obliging the Geneva Convention, so on and so forth. Anyway, uh, we're running out of time here. I'm just going to continue moving on, folks. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about this viral video. Have y'all have y'all seen this viral vir- video as of late that is highlighting or actually being, uh, I wouldn't say highlighting, but they're actually drawing attention to racially insensitive Halloween costumes. Have you have y'all seen this? Have you seen it? There, there's a goddamn viral video going out uh, with a bunch of kids, you know, holding some pictures of some racially insensitive kind of, uh, I don't know, Halloween costumes or something, and saying, um, this is not right. I mean, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I mean, uh, can we please get off this racial crap? I mean, there's nothing worse I hate in the world than a group of people sitting here, ah, oh, it's racially insensitive, and I'm offended. That's not fair. Well, why don't you identify yourself as an individual instead of grouping yourself up with some tribal skin tribe, for Christ's sake? I mean, what do we get in with the new perception out here? I mean, don't you understand that race, culture, religion, political romanticism, and nationalism have done nothing but cause habitual human strife since the beginning of human history? And for us to be sitting here continuously pussy-pampering this racial issue makes me sick, man. I mean, who cares what race people are, you know? Why do you think that I always, uh, you know, have racial humor on my broadcast? Because I hate race. I think race is ridiculous. Huh? I think culture is ridiculous. I mean, you know, it'll be a great day in world history when both of these notions are in the halls of antiquity. For Christ's sake. You understand? Because I'm sick of race. I, I'm sick of cultures. I'm sick of political romanticism. I'm sick of these theocratic zealot religions. You know, I'm sick of this nationalistic ideas, for Christ's sake. I mean, all these ideas have done nothing but cause habitual human strife. I mean, it has stained the halls of history with blood, for Christ's sake. I mean, Jesus Christ. But once again, uh, coming back to this uh, viral video about racially insensitive Halloween costumes and it going viral, I mean, give me a break. Get a life. I mean, whoever produced this freaking video, get a freaking life, all right? Who cares if people have racially insensitive costumes, huh? I mean, if you see them on the street and you you take offense to it, go up to them if if you're that upset about it. But, of course, they're not going to be in your social circles. They're probably going to go to some party, you know, and it's, it's probably some tongue-in-cheek joke, you know, and, 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 but people are still going to be all, oh, it's insensitive, it's not fair, it's not fair. So this is what I'm challenging everybody who's listening to me to do, all right? If you haven't already made your plans for Halloween, please, somebody, if you can get this on YouTube, if you can do something like this, man, you will be. I will follow you on Twitter if you do this. All right, I will follow you on Twitter if you do this, and, and I don't follow anybody. All right, I follow no one. But somebody, please throw a politically incorrect Halloween party, please. All right, and try to figure out the the, the most politically incorrect costumes that you can think of. You know what I mean? I'm serious, like the most politically incorrect costumes that you can think of. Like, uh, like I was thinking about, uh, you know, me and my wife were talking a little bit about uh, doing some something for Halloween out here in Austin. They, they make a big to-do out here in Austin, Texas. I was thinking about dressing up as, uh, as a conquistador, you know, like Cortez, you know, dress up like a Spanish conquistador.
conquistador, and I was going to have my wife on like a leash or something and say that this was Montezuma's girl, and I conquered Montezuma's Aztec... Uh, uh, Aztec Empire and took his girl and this is what I got in I'm going to dress her up like one of them tribal Aztec chicks. You know what I'm saying? I'm serious. I mean, please, if you're out there listening, please have a politically incorrect costume party. I mean, not only will I follow you, but I guarantee you that goddamn son of a bitch video would go viral. All right? Oh, my God, it's going to go viral as hell. I'm, I'm not joking, man. I'm not joking. I mean, you know, somebody should dress up like Ike Turner, you know what I'm saying, in some pimp suit, you know what I mean? You got pinky rings on and stuff, and then have your girl that's standing next to you with a black eye and a busted lip, you know, of course, you know, makeup induced, not really, you know, you know put, a, put, a, put a fat lip on her, a black eye, you know what I'm saying, some battered cheeks. I mean, that's what I'm talking about, you know what I mean? I mean, uh, let's, let's put a politically incorrect Halloween party on the internet. You know what I mean? I'm not joking. I want to see politically sensitive, racially sensitive costumes. You want to know why? Because we should have the freedom to do so. That's why. All right? We shouldn't have some uh, insensitive little prick sit here and say, I'm offended, so I don't think that you should be sitting there doing that. Yeah, I think it should be against the law. Yeah, shove it up your ass, all right? Once again, please, if if you could please have a politically incorrect Halloween costume party and make sure to put it on YouTube, I will follow you. I kid you not. I mean, make sure it's a good party, too. Not like three or four schmucks hanging out in the living room, please. Make sure it's a decent party going on, all right? But I want to see politically incorrect costumes, you know what I mean? I want to see uh, white guys dressed up in afros and uh, and big thick ass chains, looking like pimps. You know what I'm saying? I'm not joking. Straight up. I mean, I, I want uh, I want chicks to look like uh, Jodie Foster uh, after the pinball scene in The Accused. You know, what I mean, dress up in costumes like that. All right. I'm just saying. Anyway, six four six six five two four eight six nine is number to call. We're almost done here, and we're going to take uh, radio graffiti. So let me move on with the subject matter. Uh, did anybody hear about this TSA worker? You know, this TSA worker in the airport leaving a note in some chick's uh, luggage. Did y'all hear about this crap? Well, if y'all are unaware about this particular uh, story, uh, a woman traveling through. I don't know where the hell she was going. She was going from point A to point B via the airlines, right? Well, anyway, I guess this woman must be single or she's a lesbo or whatever the case might be. But she decided to, you know, pack a little pocket rocket. Yeah, she decided to pack a little vibrator in her damn suitcase. You know, a little pocket rocket. You know what I mean? Anyway, uh, apparently, unbeknownst to her, the TSA looked through her bags found this little pocket rocket, and I don't know, I guess somebody decided, thought it would be cute to leave a note in there for this chick, and believe it or not, this TSA worker left a note saying, get your freak on, right next to the vibrator. I kid you not, I, I'm not joking, man. Uh, you know, the TSA worker actually wrote, the, with his own handwritten writing, for Christ's sake, Get your freak on next to the vibrator, all right? I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, that's why I'm saying I, I, I can't stand anybody who is working for the TSA. Haven't you noticed that most of the people that are working for the TSA are either bull dyke women or minorities? Haven't you noticed that? I mean, I, I've been in the airport lots of times, and it looks like Tyrone and Shaniqua with the long fingernails out there uh, doing the TSA jobs out here. You notice that? And haven't you noticed that Tyro Tyrone and Shaniqua, who are uh you know part of the TSA, they're not out there, you know, pulling over Mahmoud and Ahmed for a damn cavity search. They're not doing that. No. You notice that they're pulling over people that look like they have nothing to do with any kind of terrorist act. They're pulling out people that look like law abiding citizens. They they're pulling out people that look like they have better lives than they do. I mean, and you can look up on YouTube how many people have been searched, groin checked, 
uh, anal cavity searched because of the so-called random TSA pullouts. No pun intended. I mean, can you believe this crap? That's why I'm saying, folks, I mean, uh, luckily, I do all my business in Texas, all right? So I can drive anywhere I want to in Texas. I'm I'm not going to sit here and get on another goddamn plane if I'm going to be subjected to this type of ridicule, given the fact that I'm a taxpayer that paid for Shaniqua and Tyrone to be groin checking out here. I refuse to be sitting here and treated like a goddamn terrorist, all right? So as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to get on a goddamn plane unless it's private, baby. And let me tell you, I love riding private planes. Have have y'all ever uh, chartered a goddamn Learjet? Oh, my God, it's not that expensive. It's only like three or 4,000 bucks, man. And you can bring you and your crew, and you can, you know, fly from here to wherever the hell you want, man. It's great. All right? It's not that much. Like 4,000 bucks to charter a plane, man. Ain't that, that ain't that much. That ain't that much at all, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, let's say you don't have the three or 4,000. You, you, know, you get a couple of bros together, a couple of friends, and pitch in money. You can all take the Lear together. And when you take a Learjet, you don't have to go through the goddamn TSA crap. You know that? You don't, you don't have to take you – know, you just go right onto the tarmac in your car, and they open the door for you, go right from the car to the goddamn plane. It's great. It's it's great. I, I love it. Now, I don't really go too much out of the state of Texas, but when I do, I do fly a private Learjet. It's great. But anyway, once again, the TSA uh, decided to go ahead and go through some uh, young lady's bag because I guess uh, the bag went through x-rays and they saw this anomaly in her bag, for Christ's sake. They realized that it was a vibrator. It was a pocket rocket. And lo and behold, the TSA worker decided to leave a note in this lady's bag saying, Yeah, baby, get your freak on, baby. Get your freak on. I mean, come on. You, you, knew, you knew somebody about, like, like Tyrone or, you know, somebody like, you know, somebody like that went through the bag. I mean, who in the hell leaves a note, get your freak on, unless you're actually, uh, with all due respect, uh, you know, down with the brothers? You know what I'm saying? And as far as I'm concerned, I, I can't uh, I can't stand these TSA workers at all, man. I can't stand them. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, if you're a TSA worker, and uh, if I see you at any one of these bars and you're off duty, I mean, we're going to have to throw fisticuffs, you stupid, ungrateful, disgusting, uh, perverted, molester pieces of crap. All right? Because not only are these TSA workers fondling regular everyday american citizens they're fondling little kids yeah they're actually giving groin checks to little kids folks and it's being subsidized by our tax dollars and being backed up by our government huh yeah this is great isn't it oh yeah yeah tyrone and shaniqua and if it ain't them it's some bull dyke haven't you noticed this? i saw a goddamn uh uh, a video of some little girl being felt up by some, you know, butchy-headed, bull-nosed bull dyke. And it's one of the most grotesque things I've ever seen in my life. Like, this bull dyke isn't getting off on feeling up on some little girl? This is sick, man. This is sick, twisted crap. And if you're a TSA worker, I hope you get a pitchfork shoved up your ass in hell when you croak! Anyway... Let me move on to another subject matter. This is the finest, su- uh, the final subject matter of the broadcast. Then we're going to move on to radio graffiti. Uh, but it's probably one of the funniest. All right, uh, a guy in uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado, uh, decided that he was going to hook up with some bitch on the internet. That's right. You know how it is. I don't know if he was on, you know, Facebook or Craigslist or. Or whatever the hell it is, but he decided that he wanted to go ahead and hook up with some uh, cyber poontang that he's been finger banging over the internet for a past couple of months or whatever the case might be, right? So he decides to say, hey, come on over, baby. Come on over at uh, 3 in the morning, all right? Come on over here and we're going to have a good time and, uh, you know, we're, 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 you, know, you can work on my Johnson or whatever the case might be, all right? Well, anyway, this guy by the name of, what the hell is this idiot's name for Christ's sake? Kevin Gaylor. Convenient name. He was 24-year-old Kevin Gaylor. 
decides to, you know, get this internet bitch to come over to his house at 3 in the morning. But the problem is his girlfriend shows up early from work. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? This guy had a girlfriend. He had a girlfriend. She shows up at 2 in the morning. He's expecting the internet whore to get in at 3 in the morning. And lo and behold, at 3 in the morning, the broad comes in, you know, because uh, apparently I guess they had an agreement that she could just kind of walk in. They were going to go and, and have some sexual relations or whatever the case might be. Anyway, do you know what this idiot does? This idiot, Kevin Gaylor, instead of admitting to his girlfriend, hey, you know, this is some bitch uh, that I decided that I was going to try to have an affair with, or instead of coming clean, all right, this guy calls the cops on this broad that he invited to his house for a sexual liaison, all right, calls the cops and says that she's a burglar. <laughs> I mean, she, I mean, he actually says that this bitch is robbing his house as opposed to actually admitting to his damn girlfriend that, yeah, I mean, I invited this internet slut over here behind your back. No, no. He decides to call the cops and charge this bitch with burglary. <laughs> I mean, I kid you not, man. As a matter of fact, for you folks that want the story, uh, here it is, right here. It's off the AP. It's not. It's not a very long story, but it's a very funny one, to say the least. I mean, the guy decides that he's going to call this broad uh, the burglar. Anyway, the police put two and two together and realized that this guy was trying to. Uh, this guy was trying to pull a fast one, so they ended up charging Kevin Gaylor uh, with, uh, you know, basically falsifying a a, a report. You know, it's a misdemeanor offense, but uh, he was cited for falsifying a report to the authorities. I mean, can you believe this crap? I mean, what, what kind of asshole do you have to be to not only invite, let, I mean, let alone some poontang, but cyber poontang? I mean, you don't even know this bitch. You don't even know this hoe. You know, you only know her through pictures and, 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 and text messages and all this other crap. You invite this broad over at 3 in the morning, then the girlfriend comes home at 2 in the morning, and then you're going to tell the police, you're going to call the police that this broad's a burglar? I mean, what an asshole, man. What an asshole. Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, uh, that's about it. Um, let's just go ahead and get to everybody's favorite part of the broadcast. And I'm talking about Radio Griffey! That's right, folks. It's time for Radio Graffiti, and for you folks that are unaware of what Radio Graffiti is, it's that time of the program where you, the listener, can actually interact with the broadcast. All you have to do is give me a call, 646-652-4869, and when I call on your area code, and when I call on your goddamn Skype name, you've got exactly three to four seconds. Three to four seconds to say whatever it is that you have to say on your mind. That's what Radio Graffiti is. And when I call on your name or your goddamn Skype name, or your, or your phone number or your Skype name, say something, asshole. Be prepared to say whatever it is that you have to say, and don't be a Helen Keller deaf mute. That's all I'm saying, for Christ's sake, all right? Jesus Christ, I can't believe that I, I stayed on the air this long. I, I really wasn't anticipating stay, staying on the air this long. I made large sums of money today. As a matter of fact, I want to go out and contribute to the American economy tonight. All right? And tomorrow night. And the whole weekend, for Christ's sake. I don't even know if I'm going to have a Baller Friday edition. But let's go ahead and see what we have for Radio Graffiti, all right? Let's go ahead and take it from the top here, all right? 646-652-4869. We've got Ghetto Christmas Radio Graffiti. Trick or treat goes. Trick, I'm going to fuck you in the ass. Son of a bitch. Another snake, radio graffiti. You stupid assholes. Although I do like Mario 2. As a matter of fact, I like Mario 1, 2, and 3. Alright? Mario 1, 2, and 3 kicks ass. Then they came out with a Super Nintendo and I stopped buying Nintendo altogether. Alright? Super Nintendo sucked the chrome off of a 57 Chevy bumper. It sucked! Alright? It sucked! That's why PlayStation came in and kicked their ass. Y'all remember the first PlayStation? Y'all remember that? Kicked the crap out of Nintendo. Remember Taken 2, for Christ's sake? That was a good game. Taken 2? Huh? Anyway, let's, not, let's stop talking about video games, for Christ's sake. Who else we got? 
Uh, area code one 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 radio graffiti. Yeah, you stupid moron. Tara Strong, radio graffiti. You need to tell me how capitalism leads to friendship. Now oh, shut up, you stupid dumb broad. All right. Uh, and not only that, I mean, Tara Strong, uh, if you're the broad that does the voices for My Little Pony, um, somebody needs to give you a hoof to the mouth. Uh, here we go. Here comes Johnny, Radio Graffiti. Ghost, we love thy show, and we have decided to grace thy show by speaking in the traditional Royal Cantalot voice. It is... Uh, that's great. I'm very proud of you. Skull 314, Radio Graffiti. Uh, I have a question about, um... I'm 16, and I want to get into college and shit. What do I do? All right. Like, how do I make money? Like, how do I make money? Like, from 16, stock? get a job. All right? As a matter of fact, you should be able to get a job better than anybody else at 16. I mean, they're out there hiring at Mickey D's, you know, Wendy's, uh, you know, all the fast food joints, for Christ's sake. Go out there and get a job and save your money. Don't blow your money on some stupid bimbo that, uh, you know, has got a juicy ass and some big chiches or something. Remember, bitches like that come a dime a dozen, all right? It's time for you, especially at 16, to go out there and make some capital and save it, all right? And, and not, not to mention, don't go to college, all right? Do, do not go to college. Don't go to college, all right? I mean, the bottom line is, is that you can make more money, all right, working from age 16 to 21 than you'll ever make after college, all right? You know it, and I know it, all right? You could save at least forty or $50,000, and that's and that's a very, very conservative estimate, all right? I mean, forty or $50,000 uh, after working from 16 to 21. And then once you have that amount accumulated, well, by God, once you go to the bank and say, hey, baby, I want a penthouse, or I want a loan for a business, or I want a loan for a goddamn G-Series Mercedes. I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? This is how you do it. This is how the world works, all right? That's how you get rich, for Christ's sake. Anyway, 215, Radio Graffiti. It's Friday, Friday. I'm sick and tired of all our Friday. I'm a freaking radio. Oh, shut up, you stupid asshole, all right? Trying to mix me with Rebecca Black, for Christ's sake, huh? Jesus Christ, her career was faster than that one pope that got assassinated, for Christ's sake. Exara Hawks, Radio Graffiti. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, Exara Hawks, you're a pretty good piano man. You know what I'm saying? Whenever you have a recital, you got to let us know. You have to let us know because we, you know, some of us may go there, all right? We may go there. Pretty pretty good piano playing. Uh, 580, Radio Graffiti. Shove it up your ass, all right? Let me tell you something right now, and I'll say it again. Eminem better never come to my hood. He better never come to Austin, Texas. Because if he does, I will be the first one out here looking to kick the living bejesus out of his ass. Do you understand that? And I will commit the crime and do the time. Do you understand? I don't care. I'll be more than happy to go to jail after beating the living be Jesus. All right? After beating the living be Jesus out of this disgusting, ridiculous mockery. This ridiculous mockery of black people. Because that's what Eminem is. He's a ridiculous mockery of black strife. All right? And why black rappers, you know, like real hard-ass gangster rappers aren't going after this idiot and busting caps after this fool is beyond me. I have no idea. This guy's a complete mockery of black strife, for Christ's sake, but, you know, he's on BET. He's on the BET Awards. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's this and that. I mean, I could screw this idiot. And you notice that Eminem doesn't start beefs with anybody. He only starts beefs with, uh, you know, Moby. You know, some half a fruit that looks so overly feminized that you could break him just by pushing him, for Christ's sake. Yeah, that's who he goes and picks on, people that he knows that he can kick their ass. So I'm telling you this right now. If I ever see Eminem out here in the Austin City streets, I'm going to kick the living shit out of him. I'm not joking, man. I'm going to kick the bejesus out of this idiot, all right? 
and I'll commit the crime and do the time. And when I go into the jail after I kick the shit out of Eminem, I'm going to become Mr. Black People. Do you understand that? I will be Mr. Black People. I bet you money that after I kick the living bee Jesus out of Eminem, I'll be going into jail for Christ's sake. The black and Mexicans will be hoisting me on their shoulders like I'm a freaking sultan. You know what I'm saying? They'll hoist me on their shoulders like I'm a freaking sultan because they'll realize that, hey, I kicked the living crap out of this cracker-ass cracker that is making a mockery of ethnic minority strife. I'll become Mr. Black People. So let me, if you if you all know Eminem, if you all know him personally, please tell him I said that. All right? <laughs> please tell him I said that. Because I hate this son of a bitch. I, I don't like Eminem. He's a stupid, sorry sack of crap. You want to talk about studio gangsters. I mean, it's bad enough that we got people like Calvin Brodus, you know, and Tupac Shakur, and all these other studio-ass gangsters that are out here manipulating the uh, uh, the urban community with their ridiculous banter. But now you've got a cracker-ass cracker like Eminem not only making a mockery of black strife, but stupefying other minority groups as a result. Jesus Christ. Area code 847, Radio Graffiti. You. Oh, great. 404, Radio Graffiti. I'm so... Not not only not only is that bad playing guitar, that sounds like one of those fifty dollar specials that you get like on uh home shopping network for Christ's sake. I mean, did anybody hear the sound on that guitar? That was horrible. I mean, why don't you get a guitar with some humbuckers on it, you know? Why don't you get some goddamn guitars with some humbuckers so you can get that da, 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 da. I mean, seriously, that sounded like some pussy whip little guitar there with, you know, uh, Jesus Christ, you idiots don't know what I'm talking about. Hey, let's just keep going, all right? Uh, we got uh, 214, Radio Graffiti. Okay. Uh, Shut up. 561, Radio Graffiti. Ghost, what are you doing? You can't drink all these fucking beer Yeah, that was stupid. Uh, 763, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost, what's your opinion on furries? Uh, They're ridiculous idiots that need to be repeatedly beaten on the head with a kendo stick. Uh, 502, Radio Graffiti. <laughs> I can't even understand you with that cheap ass phone, you stupid milky liquor. Six two six radar uh two six two radio graffiti. Take those tax dollars, spread the wealth. We have the ninety nine percent. Woo Yeah, yeah, you you represent it really, really good. Uh, woo Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure Occupy Wall Street really appreciates you representing them with a woo Jesus Christ. Who else we got? We got three one four radio graffiti. Yep. Taking too long, Pecker Shaft. Three three nine, Radio Graffiti. Can't even understand what the hell you're saying there, Milky Liquor. Eight one seven, Radio Graffiti. <laughs> I can't hear you. Can you say that louder? <laughs> of course not. You can't. Eight six zero, Radio Graffiti. I'm so fresh, you should suck my nuts. I'm so fresh, you can suck my nuts. I'm so fresh, you can suck my nuts. I'm so fresh, you can suck my nuts. Suck my nuts. Shut up with that stupid song, all right? Uh, 716, Radio Graffiti. Hello. What's your favorite Street Fighter character? Uh, My favorite Street Fighter character? Jesus Christ, I don't know. I played them all. I like Street Fighter. As a matter of fact, I was one of those schmucks back in, like, 93, you know, out there, you know, playing, you know, at the arcades, you know what I'm saying, kicking everybody's ass. You know what I mean? But I do like Ryu. You know? Are you good? Are you good? Are you good? Uh, but I also like that army guy. He was also pretty cool. But he was a rip-off of Ken anyway. Uh, what is it? Uh, the 617 Radio Graffiti. You can think. Suck my dick! Suck my dick! Are you kidding?
kidding me, you stupid idiot? You made a remix of that? You made me you made a remix of that for Christ's sake? I mean, good God! Get a life! Orf eighty three radio graffiti. Those TSA workers searched me for drugs when I got into the United States. All right, man. Hey, it's good to hear from you, Orf, man. Uh, you know, keep listening, man. I like the fact that. Uh, uh, you tweet me every now and then, and you retweet some of the stuff that I tweet, man. So keep listening. I appreciate you. Uh, 781 Radio Graffiti. Cannonball. Stupid idiot. 303 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost. I love your show. I listen to it, like, every day. And shout, shout out to the engineer. Hey, thanks a lot. Hey, engineer, you got some girls saying uh, shout outs to you, for Christ's sake, huh? What do you think, Engineer? You got a girl giving you shout outs here. Well, you can hear the excitement in the engineer here. Uh, who else do we got? 917 Radio Graffiti. Jesus Christ, with you freaking remix bastards. 818 Radio Graffiti. Red Rom. Red Rom. Red Rom. Red Rom. I mean, what are you, that stupid, tarted kid on, on The Shining, for Christ's sake? I hated that kid on The Shining. You know, I love Stanley Kubrick, man. One of the, probably the greatest director of all time. But that stupid kid was a ridiculous, stupid, dumbass character, for Christ's sake, all right? They could have picked a better looking kid or, or a freakier looking kid than this stupid, uh, imbecilic, uh, bull haircut uh, asshole, all right? I hated that. Red Rom! Red Rom! Not here, Mrs. Torrance. It is not here, Mrs. Torrance. Shut up! I mean, I like uh, Stanley Kubrick. I still thought it was a decent movie. It wasn't his best. Clockwork Orange, baby. Classic. All right? Clockwork Orange. Uh, 813, Radio Graffiti. You said everyone had a price, right? How much to fuck your wife? I couldn't understand you from the lard that's uh, permanently in your throat. All right? Get that shit surgically extracted. Then maybe I'll understand you. 831, Radio Graffiti. <laughs> God damn it. I'm, you're making a techno song about that? I'm not a Jew, asshole, all right? I, I, don't know, I don't know why you people insist upon continuously calling me a Jew. I'm not a Jew, all right? I am not a Jew, all right? I use yarmulkes for coffee filters, all right? Don't, don't sit here and give me that crap. Six, uh, 636 Radio Graffiti. <laughs> Some guy, uh, I don't know, obviously is taking it up the pooper one too many times because that was obviously uh, passing wind. You know what I'm saying? I mean, let me tell you something right now. I, you know, I, in Austin, Texas, we got a lot of fruit bowls walking around out here. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, a lot of homosexuals walking around, and they even patronize the straight bars, these homosexuals out here in Austin, Texas. And, and let me tell you something right now. You know, when you're guzzling down beer, you know, you get some gas in the stomach going on. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, occasionally you, 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 you got to break wind. You know what I'm saying? And when I break wind, I mean, it sounds a little something like this. A... I mean, you know what I'm saying? But you do a fart like that in Austin, Texas. These homosexuals will come out of the bar saying, Oh, my God, a virgin. There's a virgin here. There's a virgin. Sick, twisted assholes out here. I'm telling you that right now. I'm sure you'd probably get the same thing in San Francisco. Jesus Christ. Anyway, what a, what a 509 Radio Graffiti. Yeah, very good show, Ghost. And much love from Russian capitalists. Oh, well, at least there's some Russian capitalists out there. They're not, they're not all commies, huh? Six, uh, 768 or 786 Radio Graffiti. <laughs> the render man is real. How bizarre! Christ, grow some hair on your sack, you little prick. 435, Radio Graffiti. Do you like fapping the Princess Celestia? No, it sounds like you like fapping the naked pictures of Ricky Martin's asshole just by the sound of your voice. 360, Radio Graffiti. Interior Crocodile Alligator. I got a Chevrolet movie theater. Interior. Hey, wait, 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 wait a minute. Hey, asshole, we don't want to hear your rap music, all right? 
I mean, this isn't the X Factor. This isn't American Idol, all right? All right, I mean, Ice Cube, Russell Simmons, they're not listening to this show, all right? So you ain't going to get signed, so stop it. 347, Radio Graffiti. More love from Russian capitalists. But if I'm telling... Jesus Christ. What's up with these cockeyed Russians calling me all of a sudden? You know what I mean? I mean, you know, these goddamn cockeyed Russians who... You know, and with all due respect for to Russians, I mean, can you please close your mouth? I mean, have you ever seen a Russian just standing around, for Christ's sake? Their mouths are wide open. I mean, close your freaking mouth, man. You freaking bug-eyed, half a tart looking freaks. Jesus Christ. 779, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost. Uh, I like that story you had about that, um, that airport security bag thing. I have a question about it. What's up? Um, that young lady's bag that had the pocket rocket in it, was that, uh, would that happen to be your, your bag? Stupid idiot. I mean, look, look at how hard it took you to get that out of your goddamn cheese hole, for Christ's sake. You stumbling, mumbling, no personality, having dick. 847, what's up? Radio Graffiti. Your- playing with your paper, you're playing with your Peter Popper. Uh, 920, Radio Graffiti. Oh, stupid idiot. Look, you hear those two assholes there having a circle jerk together. Do you hear that? Two different assholes, for Christ's sake. 520, Radio Graffiti. Yeah, just playing with your Peter Popper, for Christ's sake. Uh, 646, Radio Graffiti. I'm a with my my Shut up, all right? 720, Radio Graffiti. Hey guys, what do you think about Ghost? I was thinking he's a fucking racist! And a ham bone! Now shove it up your ass, you stupid moron! Alright? I'm not a freaking ham bone! Assholes. 214, Radio Graffiti. Um, you beat those. Uh, um, 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 spit it out, boy! 111, Radio Graffiti. Fuck you. And fuck your mom, all right? Uh, 404, Radio Graffiti. I'm so fresh you can suck my nuts. I'm so fresh you can suck my nuts. I'm so fresh you can suck my nuts. I'm so... Uh, and there, there's the guy with a cheap-ass guitar again. You, you know, that's not how you say it. You got to say it with some soul in you. You know what I'm saying? You got to say it with some soul. You got to be like, I'm so fresh you can suck my nuts. I'm so fresh, you can suck my nuts, Nick. I'm so fresh, you can suck my nuts, man. I'm so fresh, you can suck my dick. Sorry, folks. Don't mean to be so vulgar, but, uh, you know. 213, Radio Graffiti. Yeah, why do you lie to people? Well, why do you sound so fruity? How about that, huh? How, I mean, how come you sound like you just popped out of the anal passage of Richard Simmons to a Sweatin' of the Oldies video, for Christ's sake? 303, Radio Graffiti. 303, Radio Graffiti. Hey, it's 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 me again. Sorry, I have a cold. Um, do you like cats? Do I like chaps? Cats. Oh, do I like cats? No, I hate cats. As a matter of fact, uh, I think cats uh, are probably one of the most useless animals on the face of the planet. I mean, any animal that's going to act stuck up when you're feeding it deserves to be kicked, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, who else do we got? 832, Radio Graffiti. Capitalism from the soul to the bullet hole, and Josh Fudgham, you're an idiot. Uh, 713, Radio Graffiti. <laughs> the stupid fruity bastard. Who else do we got going on over here, man? God damn it. 210, Radio Graffiti. Hello? Yeah. Oh, hey, there you go. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, I just have a, a bit of a question. How does it feel to be the new Christian Wilson Chandler of the Internet? Shove it up your ass, all right? Shove it up your ass, all right? I'm not that stupid entitlement recipient piece of garbage that should be, you know, on the other end of a goddamn wood chipper. 636, Radio Graffiti. <laughs> Stupid morons. 404, Radio Graffiti. I'm so fresh you can suck my nuts. I'm so fresh you can suck my nuts. 
Oh, then you see now. Now he's trying to get some soul in it. He's, he's trying to get soul now. Like, yeah, I'm so fresh you can suck my nuts, baby. I'm so fresh you can suck my nuts, baby. Nine four nine radio graffiti. Oh, hey, it's me. Um, I just want to ask a question. What's up? Um, first off, Herbert came for president. Second, how does it feel to be the world's biggest nigger fascist? What is that? What the hell does that mean? Nine four nine six hundred eight six zero three. What the hell does that mean? Bullies forever! Woo! Stupid idiot. Three one three radio graffiti. I'm eating good. I got my potato chips. Yeah. I'm EBT EBT EBT. I got my EBT EBT. Damn sons of bitches! That's it. All right. Screw Mr. EBT and screw these entitlement recipient pieces of garbage. Come on out of here. Just... You piece of crap. I deserve more respect. I deserve more respect. I mean, I'm a capitalist. God damn it. I'm a capitalist. And I deserve the respect accorded that goddamn title, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. I mean, just, uh, give, me the, give me the mic. Hey, give me the goddamn mic. <laughs> Freaking mic, for Christ's sake. Are we on the air, engineer, for Christ's sake? <laughs> well, good. I'm glad we're not on the air, for Christ's sake. Let me tell you something right now, you stupid pricks. I deserve more respect than what you assholes are giving me, for Christ's sake, all right? I mean, I'm shooting pearls to you idiots, all right? I'm giving you money-making opportunities. I mean, I'm doing whatever I can in hopes of providing synapses in the brains of those that are across the Internet, for Christ's sake. Don't you understand that? And I don't deserve this type of agitation. I don't deserve this type of agitation! So let me tell you something. Hold on. Lock down the chat, engineer. Lock down that goddamn chat. All right. Now I want everybody to know that uh, my Twitter account is Ghost Politics. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, boy. Follow on Twitter. It's not that hard. And moreover, make sure to send me a couple of tweets every now and then. All right. I enjoy, uh, you know. I enjoy reading people's tweets out here. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate good feedback. I don't appreciate you assholes who tweet me up and and, and insult me and talk garbage. I don't appreciate that whatsoever, all right? And moreover, if you haven't had your fair fix of true capitalist radio, well, by God, go to the archive. That's right. Every single episode of the true capitalist radio show is, is archived, time dated, and stamped. All right, and you can download them all for free, whether it's stream, streaming them through the internet or downloading them to your goddamn iPad, iPhone, i iPod, whatever the hell you got. Make sure to go to blogtalkradio.com/ghost. All right, let me go ahead and put that on the damn screen out there. Make sure to add that to your favorites. Make sure to add that to your goddamn uh, bookmarks. The whole nine yards. All right. And that's all there is to it, baby. <laughs> anyway, let me go ahead and give some chat room shout-outs. I haven't done a lot of chat room shout-outs. Let's go ahead and do them right now. I, I know uh, that people are like, I want you to give me a chat room shout-out. So let's go ahead and give them, all right? Now, we've got Scion Othoris, all right? We've got another Scion in it. we got the Hair Binger. We got zero 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 huffing. Uh, I can't even pr- I can't even read that. Zero 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 DJ Pony. Zero zero zero. I hate. I'm not gonna say that. Kick that asshole out. Kick him out. Zero 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 Turk Shake. Zero 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 Anal Burnt Toast. Zero 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 Bronies for Ghost. Zero 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 Ghost Grand Lizard. Yeah, shove it up your ass, you stupid moron. Zero 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 Rotting Apple. Zero 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 rule thirty four on ghost. Zero 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 testicle teaser. Ah, come on, you sick son of a bitch. Zero zero 
zero zero hot times in Texas. Oh yeah, real funny, asshole. All right, real funny. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that next one. We got 000 Steve Jobs, LOL. Hey, kick that asshole. Like, kick him out. Kick him out. We got 00 Vault Dweller. We've got 00. I'm not going to say that. Kick that asshole out here, too. Kick him out. Kick him out. Kick him all out, engineer. Kick him out. 00 Ghost on Ghost. Uh, zero zero Lyra the Unicorn, zero zero Ryan Dunn goofed, zero zero suck my nuts, zero I love my ham bones, and shove it up your ass, you idiots. All right, uh, zero cling on my willy, zero poop dumpster, uh, zero 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 poop tickler junior, one spermy the poop tickler. Uh, a good demon pan. Uh, who else we got? Aaron Gamad. Uh, accidental pony boner. Uh, a fat man. Another wizard. Another goth guy. Anthony Jones too. A partridge. Ashes on Sixth Street. Oh, Jesus Christ. We got Bobo in the place. What's going on? We got Bad BV. LOL. We got Barbecue Lone Star. Yeah, shove it up your ass, you stupid loser. We got Big Mac. We got Blues 111. Uh, we got Bored Ninja. We got Brony Slut. No, I didn't realize there was actually Brony Sluts out here. There's probably somebody dressed up like a trans testicle. Uh, we got Candy Vag. We got Count Dracula. Uh, we got Cream Pie. Uh, who the hell else do we got going on over here? We got Death Troll Face. Uh, we got Diarrhea Water. We got Dr. Conrad Murray. Dustin Crager, Dwayne Pipe, Electric Fence in the place. What's going on, man? Uh, we got E L T E L E L E L. We got, uh, I'm not going to see that. We got Eric Sean in the place, uh, European Porn Man, Export to Ex Equestria, Jesus Christ, Fluffy, Fluttershy for President, Flutter Sparkle, Fruity Fruit Bowl, Future DMB. Gasgara in the place. What's going on, Gasgara? We got Ghost. Uh, get that asshole out of here. That's going to make fun. Get, get that asshole making fun of me out. Get him out. We got Ghost is best reindeer. Get that other idiot after Ghost loves Betty. Get, get, get out. Get him out. Get them all out. These idiots that are making fun of me, get them out. Get them all out. We've got Ghost's engineer. All right. Uh, we got Giggle at Ghosty. We got Give Me Capitalism or Give Me Death. We got Glenn Beck Lover. Look at all the guests up in the place. What's going on on all the guests? How you doing, guests? Make sure to follow me on Twitter, baby. Ghost Politics is the name to follow. Uh, we've got the Harbinger. Uh, we've got uh, Haran Yan. Uh, we got, I'm not going to say that. Get that asshole making fun of Herman Cain out of here. Get him out. Get that asshole making fun of my man. Herman Sugar Cane, get him out of here. We got IG Films V2. Uh, Jake Schuler. Uh, we got Jer the Powell. Jay the Lurker. Uh, Kazoo. Low Fat Sperm. Ah, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Uh, we got some asshole named Mexican Ghost. We got Mummy, M Mummy Yummy Lemons. We got Mon King. We got the Nigerian in the place. What's going on? We got NWO Informant, Pinkie Pie, uh, Poop Shoot, Pop Fluster. We got Princess Incestia. We got Ray MK01 in the place. Uh, we've got Sam Baker. How you doing, Sam? Sam Baker, 743 in the house. Uh, we got Senior Klopp. We got Senior Rapist. Get that asshole out. You know, some idiot they call himself Senior. Get him out! We've got Slashy. We got Snow Goons. Space Sweeper. SP Lee. We got Super Fast Jellyfish. Suspicious Tumbleweed. How you doing there, Tumbleweed? Uh, we've got Sweet Tooth Killer. We've got Tara Strong in the place, who's supposedly, be, so who's supposedly the uh, voiceover of... Uh, you know, these My Little Pony thing, thingamabobs, these stupid little 
ridiculous cartoons. Uh, who else do we got? We got uh, Tasty Crazy Asian. Jesus Christ. What do, what do, what do you taste like? Fried rice, you plick? Uh, we've got The Chiz, too. Uh, we've got Tyrus. We've got uh, Unreal Air. We got v- Veterans of Forum Wars. We got Von Richo Finn. Hey, thanks a lot for uh, some of those uh, forwarded stories. We really appreciate it there, Von Richo Finn. Uh, we've got Zen 77. We've got The Rock 88. And um, some idiot named Just Shout Hambone. And that's it for the damn shout outs, folks. All right? I mean, I know I haven't done shout outs in a long goddamn time. But we're doing them today. I mean, look at how much money I did, baby. Look at how much money I made today, for Christ's sake. Dow Jones Industrials is up over 300 points. It's great. It's beautiful. Anyway, folks, uh, you know, since we're here, let's go ahead and do a couple of after-the-show radio graffitis. How about that? We'll do a little bit of after-the-show radio graffiti and then we're out of here because I, I'm going to go contribute to the American economy. I mean, all the money that I have made, I'm going out there and spending some of it, baby. I'm having a good time tonight, tomorrow night, and the whole goddamn Halloween weekend, baby. You know it and I know it. And I'm not sure if I'm going to have a show tomorrow. I'm not sure. You know, we may have to Twitter bomb somebody to make it possible. I'm not sure yet, all right? I'm not sure. Well, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, have some after-the-show radio graffiti, all right? We've got Discard Skype radio graffiti. And I happen to have a whole bunch of slaves that happen to be black. Asshole, I never said that, you splicing jerk. Zero, 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 radio graffiti. Now, you're taking too long. One, 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 radio graffiti. Uh oh, taking too long. Hey, if I keep having these, I'll just I'll just quit the show right now. Eight one eight radio graffiti. Oh, Jesus Christ! Some idiot acting like a tard for Christ's sake. King Cornholio radio graffiti. I am Cornholio. I need TV for my bunghole. Oh yeah, that reminds me, man. I, aren't they having uh, the the brand new Beavis and Butthead tonight on MTV? For Christ's sake, I forgot all about that crap. Jesus Christ, man, we got Beavis and Butthead coming back to MTV. And from what I understand, they're not just going to be talking about uh, videos, which I really appreciate. That was probably the best part of the show, them talking about videos. Now they're actually going to talk about reality shows. They're going to talk, they're, they're going to be Joe McHale on Talk Soup. That's what they're going to be. They're, they're actually going to be Joe McHale over here. Jesus Christ. Anyway, uh, let's, let's take a couple more. 215 Radio Graffiti. I'll be calling for death. Uh, shut up, you stupid asshole. 675 Radio Graffiti. Uh, you should check out CS 188 and... Shit, I don't know. Never are, mind. Are, are you okay? Yeah. yeah. What were, okay. You, what were you trying to say? Do you... You should check out CS 188's videos on YouTube. That's all I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah, I can't even understand you, you mumbling, stumbling, little no-father-in-the-household-having-jerk. 513 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost, I just wanted to say this show's as good as your wife's pink taco. Yeah, well, good luck trying to get into it, all right? If you catch my girl legs open, better smash that. Don't be surprised if she asks where to cash at. Your girl's got them jeans that show a butt crack. My girl can't wear that. Why? That's where my stash at. <laughs> That's when uh, Little Wayne used to actually rap before he started doing this. What I just uh, rapped was from The Fireman. That was a pretty good song. I'm The Fireman. The Fireman. Uh, and that, that should go to show you that, uh, you know, my pop culture knowledge is very extensive. Uh, anyway, uh, 412 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost, if you like the original Mario's, check out the new Super Mario Brothers game for the Wii. It's only like oh, a- yeah? Oh, man. I mean, I should go check it out. First of all, I don't have a, a Wii. Uh, Nintendo Wii. I've got a I've got a fifteen and a half inch John Holmes sausage between my legs, but I don't have a Nintendo Wii. Uh, actually, I don't have any gaming system whatsoever uh, because I gave up gaming after uh, I bought the Sega Dreamcast. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I, 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 I'm I'm not joking. I, I bought the Sega freaking Dreamcast 
right when it came out in like 98, 99, whatever the hell it came out, for Christ's sake. And then it went out of business, all right? And then after that, I was like, I'm never buying a goddamn video gaming system again, ever, all right? Jesus Christ. Who the hell else we got? 646 Radio Graffiti. That was lame. 609 Radio Graffiti. Who is your favorite Care Bear? I think the Care Bears were stupid, all right? I thought they were ridiculous. All right? The Garbage Pail Kids had more clout than the freaking Care Bears, all right? 480 Radio Graffiti. My eyes have seen the glory of the trampling of the zoo. Shut up, all right? Stupid bronies. Poop Slappington, Radio Graffiti. Shove it up your ass. Stupid asshole. Cosmo Brockington, Radio Graffiti. Don't. 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 I mean, come on, man. I mean, don't mix me with Al Green. I mean, Al Green is some good-ass music there, man. Come on. I mean, come on, man. I was waiting for Al Green to come in, and then I heard uh, this idiot splice my voice with the Al Green music, huh? Come on. It don't matter if you're good or say it. If you're happy, you say it, baby. You gotta love how them black folks sing, man. You know what I'm saying? I envy the black folks when when they sing, for Christ's sake. Are you kidding me? I mean, I wish I had a voice like a black folk out there, man. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, one of them, one of them, Casey uh, from, uh, what, what the hell is that stupid dumbass, uh, Jodeci. Remember Jodeci? Y'all remember Jodeci, for Christ's sake? Come and talk to me. I really want to know your name. I really want to hear you hey. You look so beautiful, you really turn me on, on my mind every time I see your face, That's a badass song, man. Come and talk to me, I really want to meet you, can I talk to you? Uh, I really want to know you. I bet you idiots are going to remix that now, for Christ's sake. Don't remix me with the Joe to see, please. All right, those guys got talent, for Christ's sake. All right, come on. Uh, 520, Radio Graffiti. You know, people only troll you because you get so pissed. Well, so what? All right? I mean, the, no, I'll tell you why they trolled me, all right? I'll tell you why they troll me. It's not just because I get pissed, all right? I think the be, me, me getting pissed at them, you know, calling me and agitating me is part of it. But there's a whole bunch of aspects to listen to the True Capitalist radio show. First and foremost, if you're a capitalist, you're going to get some insight that's going to make you capitalize even more, all right? Secondly, I mean, I provide some commentary that has some freaking personality and not just some stupid drab-ass program that's going to put you to sleep, all right? Thirdly, I actually teach people something about what's going on in today's world, for Christ's sake, all right? Fourth... I actually intertwine all that into, you know, some kind of a comedic ball of, I, I, I guess, refreshing type of entertainment. I mean, there's a lot of aspects of the reasons why people listen to me. It's not just because I get pissed off, all right? It's because I know a lot about pop culture. I know a lot about politics. I know a lot about economics. I'm a capitalist, all right? That's why. Anyway, 673, Radio Graffiti. Hello? Yeah, goodbye. Uh, 917, Radio Graffiti. <laughs> Stupid idiot. Uh, 779, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost. Uh, I just wanted to know, do you play Minecraft? No, I don't. I think it's a stupid game. 580, Radio Graffiti. 
Yeah, taking too long, you stupid milky licking piece of nipple clamp loving butt plug up the ass looking, uh, sticking a hot dog up your ass having chicken eating corn boy crap. Eight four seven radio graffiti. Is your refrigerator running? Well, you better go get. Yeah, stupid dumb idiot. All right, go choke on a rubber tortilla. All right, seven oh six radio graffiti. Sarah Palin is a fiscal genius, and you know it. Stupid asshole. Three four seven radio graffiti. Hey, I need a few ch- injections of goddamn testosterone in my ass. Yeah, shut up, you stupid slicing piece of garbage. Six three six radio graffiti. <laughs> That's lame. 303, Radio Graffiti. Woo, triple shot on Radio Graffiti. Um, I hope you have fun this weekend. Yeah, you're damn right I'm going to have fun. Are you kidding me? I mean, look at the markets. I made major capital, baby. Do you understand? And you want to know why I'm always thinking about money? I'm always thinking about how to put money in different financial instruments and make more of it and make more of it and make more of it. You want to know why? Because i got to have it. <laughs> Woo! I got to have it. Woo! Uh, anyway, who else we got? We got uh, 508 Radio Graffiti. Yeah, you're taking too long. Uh, 850 Radio Graffiti. Of course, I've been listening to your entire broadcast, and uh, I heard you at the beginning of all. That's a fake accent. Uh, 709 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost Man, great show tonight. Loved it. Uh, keep it going, man. Fuck hey, thanks Wall, a lot, man. I appreciate protest. it. I, I hear you. Yeah, screw the Wall Street protest is right. All right? I mean, we need tear gas on all these assholes that are causing these ridiculous tent cities all across the country. All right? Get those idiots back indoors where they belong. All right? I mean, this is not a protest, all right? This is squatting, all right? What, what these idiots are doing are illegal. This is not a protest. This is squatting. Uh, this is uh, preventing business from being conducted in these areas. I mean, there is a lot of things that are illegal about these Occupy Wall Street protests, and I can't wait for these other cities to follow suit with what Oakland did and what Atlanta did, for Christ's sake, all right? These people are illegally squatting. And any one of us to, were, were to do that anywhere, like if any one of us regular, everyday capitalists were just to go and just camp out in front of anywhere, our asses would have been in jail months ago. You know it, and I know it. So all I'm saying is, is everybody needs to follow suit with what the hell Oakland PD did and get these stupid bums and get them off the streets, all right? They're hurting business owners. I mean, have you read the story? Business owners are losing business because these losers are camped out there preventing customers from going into their businesses. It's ridiculous. So you're goddamn right. Screw Occupy Wall Street. I take a dirty yellow bubbly piss on Occupy Wall Street, and all they can do is look back at me with a yellow smile about it. That's all they can do is look back with a yellow smile about it because that's all they got. 617 Radio Graffiti. Yeah, we can't understand you, you idiot. Uh, who else do we got? We got uh, Pivot Idiot Radio Graffiti. Yeah, you are a stupid idiot. 334 Radio Graffiti. Suck my dick! Uh, you're not that guy. I know you want to be that guy, but you're not that guy. Get your own meme and maybe come back and call back. 920 Radio Graffiti. Why, are you, why do you hate MM? Why do I hate Eminem? Is that what you asked? Yes. I hate Eminem because he's a fake-ass studio gangster asshole who's claiming Detroit when he got his ass kicked out of Detroit when he was like 11 or 12 years old. He got his ass kicked by this big, huge, greasy-ass black fool out of Detroit. Literally kicked the crap out of him to the point where they put him in the hospital. Then his mask his man decided to send him down to West Virginia until he was about 18 or 17. Then he came back to Detroit trying to jock the insane clown posse, uh, you know, to have him open up for these idiots. I mean, I'm serious, all right? He's a fake-ass studio gangster. I hate studio gangsters, all right? I hate studio gangsters. They're stupid. They're ridiculous. They're pathetic. They make me sick. And each and every one of those studio gangsters, I mean, they deserve a real gangster to, you know, pop some caps in their ass as far as, that's just my opinion. 
Uh, anyway, let's get a couple more callers, and I'm getting out of here. I'm going to 6th Street, for Christ's sake. I got lots of money in my pocket. I'm going to 6th Street. Man, I'm drinking rich tonight. 831 Radio Graffiti. No, I'm not I'm not listening to that. 916 Radio Graffiti. Bill Clinton. White. Fucking all these women. White. I'm Bill Clinton. White. Fucking all these women. Oh. White House. Are, are you kidding me? That's an actual song, for Christ's sake? Jesus Christ. Uh, 404 Radio Graffiti. Look at me, look at me, driving in on top. And it feels so good to be alive on top. My re- Stupid idiot. 347 Radio Graffiti. made a remix of Chicago now, man? I mean, you know, the only reason I knew that song is because it's Karate Kid 2, baby. All right? Karate Kid 2. As a matter of fact, I like the original Karate Kid. I'm pissed off that Jada Pinkett and her little stupid firecracker wannabe bulldog ass and her over-feminized husband, Will Smith, forced Hollywood to shove their dreadlocked son or their cornrow son in our faces, replacing one of the greatest movies of all time, Karate Kid, and replacing Ralph Macchio with his stupid, dumb, ignorant, ghetto ass. They ruined one of the best movies ever, you know, Karate Kid, and I'll never forgive them for that. Never. I'm never going to forgive them for that. Freaking assholes. All right. And then Jackie Chan, you know, Mr. Miyagi, Jackie freaking Chan. Jesus Christ, man. Somebody needs to tell Jackie that it's not Harrow. It's not Harrow. It's Hello. Hello. Not Harrow. Hello. I mean, how long has Jackie Chan been in America? For like, what, 15 years already? This idiot can't, you know, you know. Jesus Christ. Anyway, I'm taking a couple more and I'm out of here. All right? Uh, we got the Chiz Radio Graffiti. Ah, oh, shut up. I never said that, you stupid sorry sack of crap. I hope you get cancer of the cock for that. Uh, 860, Radio Graffiti. Ah, oh, man, this is stupid. I mean, come on. I mean, somebody say something and stop playing audio files, you stupid, dumb, scared jerks. Uh, Tim, oh, Tim, Radio Graffiti. C.S., I love your poops. I want the Josh. Woo! Over, over feminized fruiter over here wants to eat the corn out of my crap. Jesus Christ. Slash the Hedgehog, Radio Graffiti. See for my ass, oh yes, I pass. Oh, I'm a model, you know what I mean, and I do my little pen. You son of a bitches with your freaking goddamn remixes of me. I mean, God damn it. I mean, this weekend I'm contributing to the American economy. 
I'm going out there, and I am going to make sure that I buy myself a new car. I'm going to buy myself some goddamn new fur. I'm going to buy everything, baby. I'm making money. That's what I do. Oh, man, I'm so excited. Oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, I'm giddy, for Christ's sake. I'm giddy. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, anyway, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Uh, I may or may not do a show tomorrow. I'm not sure, all right? I'm not sure yet. So uh, if you want me to have a show, you know, go ahead and, uh, you know, hook me up with a tweet on my Twitter account, all right? Ghost Politics, all right? Ghost Politics is the name, baby, all right? <laughs> Woo! All right, and make sure to follow me. Make sure to let me know what's going on, all right? Let me know what's going on. Ghost Politics is in the house. Uh, and moreover, if you want to listen to the archive, if I happen to not want to uh, do this show tomorrow, if I happen to not want to do this show, um, make sure to follow me on Twitter because I may do a show this weekend. I'm not sure yet. Well, wait, wait, wait. Isn't Halloween on a Monday? Well, maybe I won't do a show this weekend. Maybe I won't even do a show on a Monday, for Christ's sake. Maybe I won't do a show for a while. How about that? I don't know. That's why you have to follow me on Twitter, all right? That's why you have to do a follow on Twitter. Ghost Politics is the name to follow so you can figure out whether or not I'm going to be doing a broadcast or not. So stop what you're doing. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and let and, and make sure to win. Jesus Christ. Make sure to know when I'm going to do a goddamn broadcast. For... All right. Jesus Christ. Give me the mic. Give me the goddamn This freaking mic, for Christ's sake. Anyway, I am out of here, folks. Thanks, everybody, for listening to me. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. Make sure to go to the official website of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Anyway, folks, I am out of here. I'm, I'm living lavish. I'm making serious capital, and I hope you're doing the same damn thing. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, folks, thank you very much for tuning in with me. Long live the capitalist movement. And uh, what was that one Twitter name that, you know, made me laugh a little bit? All right, that's right, Beatings for Bronies. Anyway, I'm out of here. <laughs> You've been listening to True Capitalist Radio. The thoughts, views, ideas, comments, and opinions of the host of this show are absolutely his. Catch more live episodes Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30 Central. Or check out archive shows at blogtalkradio.com. True Capitalist Radio. That's it. Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. Tender, slow-roasted chicken breast. Coated in our signature teriyaki glaze. Where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet. For a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. The bold flavor of Japan. Now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere.